hello, 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 what's up this afternoon, everyone? Welcome, 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 fine Tuesday to you all. Good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. What is up, seven-year great Firetron, Lukey, Luke, Luke, E, Darth V. Darth Vash, Jeremy, Lucid, how is everyone doing today? Welcome, welcome, welcome. I saw a three tick blue deck 5 league. Yeah, there's some decks that are pretty cheap going around at the moment. You can build some good budget decks in the standard. You gotta be prepared to uh, lose to me like Massacre. But other than that, <laughs> you can build some pretty good budget decks. Hey, what's up, Grim Jake? Good to see you. Welcome to the stream morning, Gleeful Chili. How are you? Hopefully everyone had a spectacular weekend. Today, we're gonna play some more standard. I've been enjoying this standard format i know you gotta play against a lot of black decks but the gameplay is actually super fun so we're gonna start with mono white control this is the deck that richard put me on to apparently he's been playing it on magic online and having a lot of success with it and it's pretty unique you don't see mono white control decks running around in such a black heavy standard format so we're gonna do some uh, gonna do some mono white controlling backup decks got a couple of kind of fun ones uh we, there's a domain deck that i found that look pretty spicy because most of the domain decks i've seen have tried to be really big. Like, you're playing all the Wraths and trying to get up to, like, the 5 mana Sphinx. This is going the opposite direction. This is Aggro Domain. It's playing all the, like, 2 mana Domain cards. Arata's Firebrand and playing Neshoba Brawlers and uh, got Rith on the top end of the curve. So a very, very Aggro different take of Domain. And then also found a, a sweet uh, token list that maybe we'll try sometime. I don't know how you play tokens in the world of Miyug Massacre, but uh, people are trying. And Ginny Fee's a sweet card. And Jetmer is a sweet card. And Jai is a sweet card. And Sarah Paragon's a sweet card. And Wedding and Elfman is a powerful card. So we'll see. That's a plan for today. Checking out some more sweet standards. Starting with a mono white dog of myth. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop here for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How is, how is alchemy? We were actually, the, well, this came up on the podcast yesterday. Alchemy has rebalanced, uh, a rebalanced version of Meat Hook Massacre. Is Alchemy still super mono black heavy and like black X heavy? Delphi Guru, I was wondering that, or does uh, does having a rebalanced Meat Hook Massacre make black less powerful? Cause we were trying to figure out, let's say they banned Meat Hook Massacre in standard. Is black still the best color in the format? Is it still like everywhere and just like 70% of the meta or whatever ridiculous amount? Or is it really Meat Hook that's, uh, that's driving all of that? Delphi Guru 2021, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup here for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Someone must know. There's got to be an alchemy player out there <laughs> just queuing against themselves over and over again. The other big news is I got to say, and I, I can't believe I'm saying this. They got these Warhammer cards, and these Warhammer cards are kind of sweet. Like, when I hear about all these other games coming into Magic, and you hear about, you know, whatever, Warhammer, you hear about all the crossover products, my first thought's always, like, is it going to feel Magic-y? And really, yeah, there's some, like, guns in the art that we wouldn't normally have or whatever. There's weird creature types, like Astarts. Like, I, I don't know what's going on with 40k creature types, seriously. But other than that, these look kind of just like Magic cards, and some of them are actually pretty sweet. There's some pretty cool designs like whatever this thing is a like Grayson star and Kellermorph. no idea what that character is no idea anything about it but it's a pretty sweet commander it like rewards you for pain if you deal one damage to something it deals two more damage to it there's some neat cards in this set so I was like surprisingly impressed by by the Warhammer cards in all honesty like if I didn't know this was a crossover product and I just saw this card or this card, or really most of these cards, discounting the weird creature types, I would just believe they're magic cards. Like seriously, I feel like they kind of nailed it. Like they did it in a really, in a really good way that still feels magic to me. So kind of excited about that actually. Maybe all these crossover things won't be as bad as we as we thought or some people thought. HS Maskman, Ubel K, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop here for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Brewing with Magus Lucille Kane Hydras. Yeah, I was trying to figure out what to do with. What to do with that card? Magnus, uh, Magnus Lysia Kane rewards you for playing X spells. If you cast it, it makes mana. If you use it just to cast X spells, you get to copy it. Seems like a sweet Hydra commander. That was the first thing I thought of too. Plus one, plus one counters, plus X spells. Kind of equals Hydra in Magic, so it seems like a good leader for a, a Hydra tribal deck. Hey, what's up, Dragon Archmage? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Anyway. 40k looking sweet. Tomer's covering it on the Commander channel this week, doing spoiler videos. So if you're looking for spoiler videos, since it's a Commander-specific product, Tomer's, uh, Tomer's doing videos about it. Yeah, the Grixis Demon, that's just the best Demon Commander, right? Like, it, let's say you want to build Demon, Demon Tribal and Commander. 
I feel like that's just the the way to go. It's like such a powerful effect. Belcor the Dark Master, six mana, Grixis color, six five flying demon noble. When it enters the battlefield, you draw X and lose X for X is the number of demons you control. So by itself, you're gonna draw one and lose one. If you get other demons, you could be refilling your hand. And then when another demon ETBs, you deal damage equal to its power to any target. So basically Warstorm Surge, I think it is, attached to a body, but only for demons. If you wanna build demon tribals, that's like the perfect, the perfect leader. I also like this Esper token thing. I don't know why, but I feel like uh, this Esper token commander, it intrigues me. We haven't really had Esper tokens be a thing, so I'm excited to try to build that. All around, I feel like they're doing a good job with these Warhammer cards, and I was not, I didn't know what to expect, but I've been impressed. I've been kind of impressed. Wow, we have two new donations. Lucid $10 donation. I got my Ebb and Flow sign playmate yesterday in the mail. So excited to use it. Very shiny. I'm glad they're finally getting there. People have been asking me, I've heard reports from other people too, that uh, they just started getting their playmats. So they're coming, they're in the mail, they've been shipped. So expect your playmat soon. I don't know uh, how it'll vary based on your location, if it might take uh, longer in some countries, but they're on the way they're showing up so uh, thank you so much for the donation lucid afro dziak welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much wait you're at jury duty <laughs> are you allowed to watch twitch streams at jury duty wait are you like <laughs> it must be like jury selection or something are you sitting like <laughs> are you sitting in like the jury box of a murder trial or something like watching <laughs> watching the stream on your phone i imagine that someone would get mad about that <laughs> It is a kind of hilarious thought, though. Yeah, <laughs> you you can determine based on. We'll help you with the vote. Uh, you go based on our record: winning record, not guilty; losing record, guilty. I don't know what I don't know what the case is, but <laughs> uh, hopefully we play well or poorly for the de defendant. Labrador. Yeah. Well, let's do it. Let's do a poll. <laughs> this week's against the odds poll. <laughs> Zer, guilty, not guilty. <laughs> also, donation from the meme ever five dollar donation. Hey Seth, I started my own MTG Arena YouTube channel. Question for you: How do you guys at Goldfish set up the deck breakdowns at the beginning of videos? The presentation is it just in PowerPoint or is it a uh, propriety to your channel? Thanks. So it is a tool that Richard created. You can do it all in PowerPoint. So it's similar to PowerPoint, but it's kind of like PowerPoint that Richard made some upgrades to, to make it easier to add cards and just make the, the process faster. So I think that everything we do in the beginning of the video can be done in PowerPoint. We just have a kind of an automated way of doing it that makes it a lot faster than actually arranging everything every time. So I think if you don't have access to that, which I guess uh, you wouldn't, I think that PowerPoint's probably the, the way to go. Another option that you can do um, with the website is uh, just use the, the deck view, which is kind of a an interesting workaround. But if you go to the, the view visual on any deck list, you get this, which is... I think it looks pretty decent. So that's a that's a very quick way that you could do it is use this as a, as part of your your presentation or your deck list or whatever. So that could be a possibility as well. Anyway, let's talk against odds Karn. People really want to see against odds Karn. I know it's not going to be as good as you think. <laughs> I know it, it sounds good. It's one of those against odds cards. It sounds good. But when you actually see the deck, you're just going to be like, oh man, I don't want to watch this. <laughs> First attempt is super friends. Ooh, let me, let me see Holith. Uh, all right. Reminders, reminders, then magic. And then we talk about whatever as we go. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll put, uh, the thing is, I know if I fit Karn on the full, it's going to win. I There is a 100% chance that it wins. I, I would not believe that there's any possibility of it not winning the poll. So I know if I put it on there, it's going to win. And then I'm committed to building and playing a Karn deck. But I really don't think you're going to think it's interesting. But maybe I'll do it. I will put it on the poll. It'll be on the poll this week. If it wins, it wins. And I'll do my best to try to make an interesting Karn deck. Like I said, I don't care if we lose a lot. Losing, fine. I, I have totally come to grips with losing many games of magic that doesn't bother me at all but i want the deck to do something cool and i'm just like a little afraid it's not going to do something cool so we'll see we'll see but i will put it on this week's poll anyway reminders replay youtube this week find all the old streams including this one in the future normal youtube uh, yesterday we played some zero rare 22 dollar burn for budget magic which pretty good not bad for being z that cheap i think it's a pretty reasonable deck if you dodge the meok massacre the meok massacre oh, that card's a blowout but it is a pretty sweet budget deck lots of upgrade potential 
potential. Tomorrow we are Jota in four against odds. Jota with a with a twist. I know people are worried. Oh, people are already playing Jota decks. They got the like Jota human deck. Don't worry, we're not just like you know playing Croaky's deck or whatever. No, 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 no. We're we're playing Jota in a in a little bit of a different way. So Jota forgets odds tomorrow. A reminder that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. If you need some magical cards, you can get them over at cardkingdom.com slash MTG Goldfish. Whether you need a foil trailblazers boots or maybe a new border ley line of the void, revel in riches, they got you covered. Even get a free goldfish sticker, just let them know you want one in your order notes, they'll hook you up. Otherwise, merch page, tokens, t-shirts, play mats, get away to support the stream and the channel and the site donations, always appreciated, never required. Two dollars or more gets your message read on stream. I feel like Karn may have synergy with artifacts in the next set. Did you see Marrow's article? Mark Rose, I was waiting for this. Where is a, uh, where is Mark's, Mark Rosewater's article? There's a, there's an article from Mark Rosewater that actually went over the design of Karn. And I think we ended up with the worst one, honestly. If you look at the article, it goes through, it goes through all the, all the versions it's okay, Karn Living Legacy. Blah, 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 blah. Karn character, old school, all that stuff. We don't really care about that. All right, first Karn. Karn Golem Guy. Four mana. Uh, four mana, three loyalty. Plus one make a power stowed. Negative two, target artifact becomes a four for artifact creature. Negative seven, create a colorless artifact token with indestructible and pay four, blow up an online permanent. I think that would be better than the the actual version that we got. Like uh, the other things they note they mentioned in this, this is kind of funny, is <laughs> When they were designing Karn, they didn't know what Power Stones did. They knew that Power Stones were important to the story, and every version of Karn that they make is plus something make a Power Stone, but they didn't actually know what Power Stones would do, which I thought was pretty interesting. I don't know, how do you... How do you design how do you design cards without knowing what the actual abilities do? That seems very, very, very difficult. Much more difficult than I thought. So they knew I had to make a power stone, but they didn't know what the power stone would do. So I think at least some of it some of it is maybe like uh, out of their hands, how good it ends up being. Uh, the next version, plus two, make a power stone. Sack an artifact. You can cast an instant or sorcery from a graveyard. Mana value less than the sacked artifact. Target artifact you control becomes a copy target non-token artifact. Mana value X, except it's an artifact and it isn't legendary if it's legendary. So I made a bunch of versions. They all kind of did similar things, but I feel like we ended up with the least powerful. Like this one's just like plus two, make a power stone, negative one, draw a card. I feel like that's like so much stronger than the version we got or like plus two, make a power stone, negative two, sack an artifact, draw a card. I think what gets me with the Karn is just that negative ability that we ended up with. It's just so, so lacking in power, but interesting to check it out if you're, uh, if you, uh, would like to. It's over on the mothership. Anyway, what are we playing today? We are starting with Mono White Control. This is the, the Richard special. Richard sent me this deck. He said it's really good against the black decks. It's pretty sweet. So what is this deck trying to do? Well, this is Mono White Stone. Stuff. I mean, I guess we, we got Invoke Justice because it's a powerful card. Can you get back a Sanctuary Warden? We got some good Planeswalkers. We got some Sweepers. The ideas in the early game were kind of like <laughs> ambitious farmhanding, ravines informing, just putting bodies on the battlefield. Then we like get them back with Extraction Specialist or get them back with Restoration of Ajano. And eventually we Invoke Justice and get something back from the graveyard or Seraphir. Got to get something back from the graveyard. So essentially just like out grinding all these black decks that are everywhere in standard. So that's the plan of this deck. Mono white reanimator, mono white control, whatever you want to call it. So I'm interested in trying this deck. Uh, Richard said it's really, really good. So we'll see. We will see. We will see. Karn's negative one is a lot more powerful than it appears on paper. Is it? <laughs> is it really? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I believe you. <laughs> Are you lying to me? <laughs> Are you lying to me, Asmore? <laughs> uh, please, the highlight was a minute on screen. Wait, what highlight? What did, what did I do, Divod? I checked out this deck after the podcast yesterday, really hoping you play it. Yeah, it, it sounded really interesting when Richard was uh, <laughs> when Richard was describing it, and then he sent me the list. So, hey, Seth, I tried the Is It Budget Magic deck in Standard. Already got to gold tier. Thanks for the deck deck. Hope you continue to make cheap budget magic decks. Well, gee, if you gold, I'm glad it works out for you. And yesterday, if you missed it, there's, a, there's already another one. This one is zero rares or mythics, so as cheap as you can get. So check that one out if you uh, if you haven't yet. 
playing some uh, some burn action. The only experience I have playing against Karn is limited. Uh, played it, did nothing, minus it, drew a card, and Karn died. Four minute draw card is not good. Yeah, um, we played against it in in on early access day, and it was mostly like that. I want Karn to be good. I'm not a Karn hater. I actually really like Karn a lot. It's one of my favorite Planeswalkers, even despite the fact that 7-mana Karn's kind of miserable. My 16-year-old hates White and Green, but wants to play Kadria because I want an army of cute... <laughs> an army of cute buddies. You have the most fun magic uh, household, I think, Doug. <laughs> The the stories the stories of the decks that you build and the reasons that people want them. It's, it sounds just like such a such a fun magic playing family. <laughs> uh Kadria. Yeah, I haven't seen uh I haven't seen a Kadria deck. Cute bunnies though, it does make cute bunnies. Oh! Oh no, speaking of cute bunnies. So I was I was talking to my my sister who who knows someone who breeds bunnies apparently but they got these oh I wish I knew the name of them there's some there's some like ah, marmoset marmoset marmot I don't know it's a little flying it's a little flying thing it's like a some sort of little fly little flying rodent you someone probably knows what I'm talking about and rambling about so incoherently but it's like some sort of little flying rodent that like has it's kind of built like a parachute and you can have them in pe as pets and they will like glide to you you can call them and they'll they'll jump and like put out sugar glider yes thank you commander are those actually like legit pets are those even legal are those is that a real thing i don't know if this was some like black market animal ring and that none of this is actually like legitimate are they are they actually animals that make decent pets or is <laughs> Or is that not how not how they actually work? They aren't squirrels. Don't get one. Why 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 no sugar gliders? Oh, I don't like high maintenance. Yeah, high maintenance. That's that's no good. Are we getting more pets? Well, I just learned that sugar gliders were a thing, and I saw I my sister made me watch a YouTube video, and they did look kind of cool. Like, who wouldn't want to be like, hey, come here and have your pet fly to you? That's actually like kind of sweet. What did what did I miss, Diamond? Diamond two climbing. Here's a sweet deck. Oh, I made I found it, Diamond. It took it took me a minute, but I found it. Parrots do that, yeah, but parrots talk a lot. <laughs> Could you imagine trying to trying to stream with a with a parrot mimicking you? That would probably be funny for like one stream. For one stream, it would be funny, and then after that, the parrot would be going on a uh, on Craigslist, <laughs> Facebook Market. <laughs> uh, you can send me uh, you can send me your deckless in chat if you want to. What are we doing now? Well, let's hmm. ambitious farmhand get a planes. Yes, please. I like the amount of land drops we're hitting. Play the land. Tick up on. Pick up on the door, can't ya? Pass the turn. Blue, white, hour. Why you hour? <laughs> Ooh, some blue, white Dow House action. I like it. That looks uh, that looks fun. I like the blue, white graveyard theme. That's a that's kind of a cool like tap out tempoy way to play blue, white rather than blue, white control, which is what you see most often. I I like it, Ivan. I mean, in Dow House of Horrors, I never make it work that well, but it's such a sweet card. That's one of the cards I would love to see become a, a like a top tier deck. Logan Goey, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup tier for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank ya. So opponent's gonna reanimate. Probably our Sanctuary Warden. That's not great. Not great at all. Well, Extraction Specialist. Get back farmhand. Get a planes. We are. Could you imagine if Amiria was in standard? Amiria being in standard would be so good. That would make this deck so strong. Well, get a planes. Get a planes. Lands for days. Pass the turn. Anna Kundura, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The idea is to win Vershieldred because I have many copies of it. That uh, that's a sweet idea, Divot. I like it. <laughs> Making a whole bunch of dive uh of shieldreds. Making a whole bunch of diphons. <laughs> Making a whole bunch of shieldreds does seem like a sweet way to win. 
Would Amiri be too good? I feel like Amiri would be okay, wouldn't it? It seems like it should be okay-ish. Even more planes. We can't even wrath because of Sanctuary Warden. Well, go to combat. Do some attacking. If our opponent blocks and breaks the seal on Sanctuary Warden, then we can wrath. All right, blocks and blocks. Hit ya. Pass the turn. Oh, yeah, I wonder if this deck could use Bank Buster. We're, we're generating card advantage, but all of our card advantage is lands. <laughs> and our opponent's got Shigiki, so I think the idea of this deck is to just, like, outgrind your opponent. But you don't outgrind. You don't outgrind Shigiki and Bank Buster. Mono Red Goblins and Explore is so good. Ooh, I've been working on a, on 8-Wack and Modern again. We gotta get some more modern, uh, modern decks going. It's been a minute. We focused on Standard for a while, but I think it's, it's about time to to play some more modern. So hopefully some modern 8 whack coming soon with a Runvelt Horde Master. Um, own it. Goes to combat. I mean, if they attack, we will Wandering Emperor and kill it. So opponent does not attack. Well, I guess we just do nothing. Uh, huh. Well, Rafine's Informant. Hmm. Now discard a land for restoration of a Jano. Get a another land. Oh, if only these planes did something. <laughs> if only they did something more than just be a planes. Well, that's the turn. Yeah, there's there's some elf action coming up. That's that's also on the list. I already actually recorded a video uh, doing some elf action, some elf balling. I think Amir would be too good because Mono White is already good in standard. Would make unbeatable in the late game. That might be true. Although Mono White's like not that good, is it? I feel like black is by far like the most dominant color. Yeah, it's a lot harder to get value out of your mana base now. That's for sure. Down to eighteen. Opponent managed to flip t <laughs> the green saga that no one plays. How are they planning on not losing our Sanctuary Warden to Wandering Emperor? I mean, we still got the depopulate. Oh, boon and pat. Ooh, Elspeth. Um, yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna do that. So, well, Wandering Emperor. Get rid of the Sanctuary Warden. Gain some life. Land and Elspeth. Take down Elspeth. All right, wedding announce. Oh, that was all. Oh, that was three invoke justices. Invoke Justice would be, like, super helpful here. <clears throat> All right, pass the turn, make a token. I Ganjo. That. <laughs> Those letters aren't the same, though, G Fuel Cold. <laughs> Those letters aren't, aren't even in the word. I saw Arn Hushenbath. Make a mono white mid rage deck today seemed really good against mono black. Yeah, I think that the idea is that white should be good against mono black. Ooh, let me see, crazy. What have uh, what have y'all been playing in standard? Anything uh, anything exciting? Karn Tribal. Wow, that is a blowout. <laughs> yeah, this. I thought this deck was supposed to be able to outgrind people, but it is not looking that way. <laughs> Our opponent is outgrinding us by a ridiculously huge mark. They got seven cards in hand. Seven. Cruelty of Gex. Yeah, this is just like super, super duper over. We're gonna take our Sarah Paragon. Draw planes number 40. I mean, I actually think we just scoop. But yeah, there's, there's, there's no way we're winning from here. Like we weren't even like a little bit close. Huh. 
wow, maybe Richard led us astray. That was... Uh, that felt like we were not even playing the same format as our opponent. <laughs> we we were drawing planes and our opponent was drawing real cards. Does not seem like a way to win games. <laughs> yeah, just uh, draw, drawing planes all day. I mean, card advantage is card advantage, but at some point you need cards that do things and not just every planes in existence. I've been trying to play Spirit, uh, the Spirit's Enchantment in Standard with Katilda and the Saga Enchant creatures from Kamigawa. That sounds uh, that sounds like it could be sweet. Hey, what's up, Reindeering? We're, uh, we're trying some Mono White at the moment, although... I feel like we need more card advantage. Where's the where's the card advantage in this deck? Like real card advantage. Card advantage that is not put a planes in your hand. We have lots of planes advantage. <laughs> oh, Sunset Revelry. Is that even helpful? I feel like Sunset Revelry, isn't that kind of only good against like mono white? Ah, there we go. Roadside Reliquary. That's the solution to all life's problems. <laughs> Oh, good old deck thinning. Opponent playing Grogi's gen list got to number one mythic with it, I believe. That's sweet. Uh, well, land and Rafine's inform it. Yeah, I might have to, we might have to rebuild this list a little bit. I like the idea, well, let's play a couple games with it. I like the idea of mono white, but... I don't like the, the lack of card advantage. Teachings of the Kirin. I've been playing a Boros version that splashes red for Fable and Jaxus and Itsuchi because copying Dragons and Sanctuary Warden seems really strong. That does seem sweet. Well, that's Restorations of Ajano. Snag of Plains. Get in for three. It's bittersweet that a deck I made with no credit attached to me is performing well. Who, what, uh, what deck is that, Daryl? I mean, I think the idea of the deck is that it's supposed to be able to beat Mono Black. I think that's the, that's the whole idea. Yeah, AO is, like, really good. I mean, the Legendary Dragons in general, I think, are pretty underrated. Especially with everyone playing... Oh, sorry, sorry, Derry. Especially when with everyone playing, uh, Jund and uh, Esper and Liliana's and Miyuk Massacres. Just like having your stuff do good things when they die is really powerful. Well, discard the land, get back the land. Ravines and Vormit. I wonder if there's a way to have an artifact. Like if we got an artifact. If we got an artifact. We'd be able to maybe draw two with Roadside Reliquary. Maybe, like, just Bankbuster. Maybe Bankbuster is just the solution to this. I mean, the amount of black in Standard is, like, over over the top. So you should be able to see the... All right, Unleash the Inferno. You should be able to see the deck list on screen. And also, exclamation point, uh, deck will, will get you there. Hmm. Well, Sarah Paragon. Land, Rafine's informant. Loot away the farm hand past the turn. Think that hearses are better than Bankbuster? I feel like we really want to be able to put counters on things when we invoke justice. Invoke justing and not getting any value out of the counters is is pretty not ideal. So we're trying to we're trying to get stuff on the battlefield, so so we can put counters on it with this invoke justice. So this turn we will probably uh take the damage and then just reanimate Elspeth, I think. Riveteer's Outlook. I saw a deck that went 5-0. I was surprised there were no Sanctuary Wardens. So good versus Black. Yeah, Sanctuary Wardens, like, super good. Well, get an Elspeth. Counters on Rafine's informant. Take down Elspeth. And I will protect them. I'll be your <laughs> get an Ambitious Farmhand. <laughs> ambitious Farmhand. Is Ambitious Farmhand a good card? Every time I see Ambitious Farmhand... It feels like it's a really bad card, but maybe uh, is it is it better than I'm giving it credit for? Is there some secret power to ambitious farmhand that I'm missing? 
Because I've traditionally just made fun of N Vicious Farman. Am I missing something about this card? <laughs> Maybe I just don't appreciate farming enough. Wow, okay. Well, I could have just attacked it, so I guess I'm glad they did it that way. Oh, uh, then it goes attacking, eats our stuff. It removes a plane, uh, planes from your draws. Ah, oh, yeah, but wouldn't we rather just draw an actual card? <laughs> I feel like our deck, all it does is draw planes. <laughs> Bizzina, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup for you, thank you, thank you, thank ya. I don't think we've ever flipped it. I don't know if we've ever even got like, especially close to flipping it. Well, go to combat, attack. About it. But if we if we get a place with farmhand and then connive it away with <laughs> and then connive it away with refuse it for it, didn't we essentially just build a spirited companion? Like couldn't we have just cast spirited companion and <laughs> and done all that with a single two drop instead of using two two drops to do that? <laughs> Run farmhand or a couple of lads. Maybe an extra few cre Oh my god, Titan Industry. Well that's a big one. Yeah, I kind of, I really want an artifact. I feel like Roadside Reliquary could be really good, but I feel like we need, we need an artifact. We want it to draw two. There's gotta, I think there's a way to make this deck sweet. Yeah, I'm tempted to switch to the dog. We might, we might switch to the dog. It might just be better. So what artifact can we get in this, in the main deck to maximize Roadside Reliquary? I'm intrigued by the possibility of Roadside Reliquary. Well, Sanctuary Warren's a good card. We'll see. Oh, we're at four? Just kidding. We're super dead. Um, well, remove a counter draw card. Play the land. Yeah, I, I didn't realize we were so low on life. I guess these Kirins were just getting in there. So we're just dead, right? Block, 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 block. I guess we... Hmm. Yeah, Titan Industry usually means you're dead. Bone it. All right, let's let's see if we can make this deck. One more match. One more match. One more match, and then we're gonna make this deck sweet. One more match with the with the initial build, and then we're gonna and then we're gonna see because I feel like this deck could be really cool if we drew if we drew cards with it. You could cut the farm hands, add two companions, two lands. How many lands do we have at the moment? Are we like cheating on lands? Is that the idea? I mean, we got 24, so it's not like we're really cheating on lands. 24 is, well, all right, not a fast hand, but once we get going, we can do things. 24 is not a very cheating number. I kind of want to see if we can build it to play four roadside reliquaries. Roadside reliquary with Sarah Paragon seems like an absurd source of card advantage. Sharks keep moving. Welcome to the fishbowl. Ah. Oh. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lion Sash. Ooh. I could see at least Lion Sash. At least in the sideboard, if not in the main deck. Bankbuster seems like an easy one. Ugh, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Well, I guess we're destroying the. Destroying the saga. So our opponent doesn't get to draw cards at least. All right, more more lands. Well, pass the turn. Mono white with bank busters. Ooh, let me see turn left. About it gets in. It's us. Swamp. Sanctuary Warden, I think, is actually a good card right now. I do think AO could be good in this. Oh, another one. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, even more lands. We don't blow up the tokens. <laughs> it's a lot of fable. To yeah, we gotta have some more card advantage to keep up with this meta. Oh yeah, Terra Sunder is kind of an issue, isn't it? Opponent. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> Flora for Floriferous. Floriferous vine wall. <laughs> Uh, floriferous. That's a that's a fun word to say, incorrectly especially. <laughs> All right, Sanctuary Warden. Boom. Draws a non-planes, please. Cycles the trial. I'm putting it to flip. I 
I'm baffled to uh, how Terra Sunder rates uncommon, but Utter End is rare. Yeah, I mean, I think that lots of Cruelty of Grixes. Is this the same deck? Is this also? I haven't seen the Crokies deck someone mentioned. Is this the? Is this the same exact list? Oh, damn it! Oh, even more lands. Uh, well, go to combat. Hit you with the Sanctuary Warden. Remove a counter. Draw even more lands. Well, playing the land, <laughs> playing vicious farmhand. You know what? Let's get even more lands. <laughs> I feel like we're playing, uh, <laughs> I feel like we're playing land tax or something, but with no way to take advantage of it. About it. Land. Ah, oh, now we can't even draw with our Sanctuary Warden. We better draw, like, an Invoke Justice or something. We need, we need an impactful card. Kills the Sanctuary Warden, but it goes to 10. Oh, Graveyard Trespasser to eat the Sanctuary Warden. Destroy evil, eh? Well, I mean, we can get rid of the reflections. I think this deck could be really sweet. We just need we just need card advantage. We need to actually have card advantage. Standard is so grindy. I don't think I thought the selling point of this deck was that it just outgrinds the black decks. But so far it all it does is get planes. <laughs> Ha, we got we got plans. We got plans. That, maybe that's the solution. We just don't have a flump. Why don't you destroy really cruelty? I mean, at this point, I think there's not really anything good to get back from the graveyard with cruelty. So, giving back a <sighs> giving back a Refiend's informant doesn't actually seem doesn't actually seem like a big deal compared to leaving a Fable of the Mirror Breaker on the battlefield. Opponent draws Titan of Industry and Shia. All right. Well, this deck has one last chance, and then we're going to rebuild it. <laughs> we're going to rebuild it and make it good. Um, well, we can bring in, I guess, the Farewells. Exiling the Graveyard seems to have value. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. What do we go down? What do we cut? Destroy Evil actually felt pretty good. I mean, the curb looks, the curb's fine, right? Bunch of twos, bunch of threes. I feel like it's just like super floody. There's no, there's a lot of like virtual card advantage, but none of it's actually good card advantage. It's all like, oh, put a planes in your hand. So we need like real, we need real cards. And the, the planes just, the planes just don't cut it. We need some, some actual real cards to go along along with our infinite planes. I think maybe I'm just super biased against Ambitious Farmhand. I feel like Ambitious Farmhand is just not a good card. <laughs> have you considered adding black? I don't think you gotta have black. I think it can be really sweet mono white. I think we just, ugh, Ambitious, even when we cut Ambitious Farmhands, actually this might be a case where Ambitious Farmhand is not horrible. We only have three lands. Getting a fourth land does have value. This, if, if this hand doesn't work, then then we just give up on this deck. Because this seems like about as good as a hand can be for this deck. Hearst, Bankbuster, Kind Vicious, Farmhand for Spirited Companion. Yeah, I think Spirited Companion is at the top of my, at the top of my list of cards to add. Well, all right, Restoration of a Giano. I mean, this hand looks good. This actually looks like a, like a actual good, good draw. <laughs> Ambitious far. Why would I want to play something that draws a land when I could play something that draws an actual card? <laughs> About it. Getting in with the tenacious underdog. Sure. Well, discard a land. Get back the land. Play the land. And pass the turn. I definitely wouldn't want Spirited Companion because that means you have to add lands. So you think the deck's cheating on lands now, half wing Steve? I mean, it's only... Hmm. Yeah, we're just gonna kill it. We could block in first strike and kill it in combat, but just exiling it seems better. Uh, sure. 
You still lose your tenacious underdog. This is what you get for hurting my people. Hmm. Hmm. Now what? I mean, I guess we can just invoke justice and attack. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's just do it. Get back the wandering emperor. Put some counters on the farm and I hope you're ready to lose. Tick down for a samurai. Hit you for five. I've been playing Tomer's Blue List to great success. Really fun. Yeah, I think Mono Blue, as annoying as that archetype is, I think it is actually like a pretty competitive deck. Yeah, I feel like just going aggro here seems pretty reasonable. Uh, well, go to combat. Attack ya. Make a spirit. An opponent! I mean, that went, that went really good. That actually felt really good. Yeah, we could have actually flipped the farmhand. Apparently, that's a thing you can do. Sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, I think maybe the other thing I think we could change is the sideboard. It's kind of like uh, the whole sideboard for aggro, for aggro, for aggro, for aggro, for aggro, for aggro, one unlicensed stirs. But like 14 cards seem to be for aggro. We could probably, we could probably have like some sweepers and so forth, but maybe we can dedicate a few slots to cards that are good in grindy matchups. Interesting tech against black right now is Fleeting Spirit in white. Ooh. Let me let me look up Fleeting Spirit. I know it like blinks itself. What is the actual? Cool. Hmm. That's a lot of fives. That's a lot of fives. Yeah, I think we got a mulligan that. All right, that's a little better. Well, put a planes to the bottom. Fleeting Spirit. Two mana, one, three. Exile three cards from a graveyard against first stripe. Discard a card. Exile it. Returns beginning your next end step. That does seem good against the black decks. That could be worth trying. Is Faithbound Judge good or bad? Faithbound Judge is interesting. I think it really depends on how, how killable it is. I think that's the question. Like... If people are playing Terra Sunders, if people are playing Void Rens, if there's a bunch of stuff that can easily kill it, then I think it's it's pretty, pretty, pretty lagging. On the other hand, if it's going to stick out, then it is a pretty legit win con if you can get the backside. It is a super cool card. Ooh, a Johnny. A Johnny could be fun. I feel like with a Johnny, though... One thing about a Johnny is I think you want to be very creature and planeswalker heavy. I think this deck just, how many hits do we have? We have 14, 15, 16, 17, 19. So we're only going to draw like one out of every three activations. I think you really got to be like 30 creatures or planeswalkers, somewhere in that range, to really, uh, to really be able to take advantage of a Johnny. So I think we'd have to rebuild to be... To be more creature heavy to make it work. Yeah, I can see Judge in the sideboard. I I have seen that with Faithbound Judge as well. I've run into a couple people playing it, and it seems like they often get like right to the point of winning and then die the turn. The turn before it would actually win the game. Alright, cruelty of Gixes for literal days. Well, they probably have to. Well, I didn't take the farewell. Okay. Well, in that case... Oh! Wow! And we draw a land. All right. Well, G to the G. <laughs> All right. Let's see if we can actually make this deck good. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Okay, let's, all right, well, let's rebuild this deck real quick, because I think this deck can be sweet. I think the deck can be sweet. I mean, we did play the same matchup twice in a row. Hey, I'm glad the, I'm glad the playmats are showing up. So, number one, Ambitious Farmhand. 
I don't believe in it. I don't believe in it. <laughs> My personal technique is to pretend like it is not a magic card. I know some people love it. But I'm not one of those people. <laughs> to me, it's kind of like Evriel Grazer. Everyone else loves it. I just I just can't get behind it. I cannot get behind it. Then I think Reckoner Bank Buster is an artifact. How else can we get artifacts in this deck? Because what I think we want to try to do is like max on roadside reliquaries. I think we can afford more roadside reliquaries. Is there another way? Is there another way to get artifacts in the deck that are likely to at least somewhat stick on the battlefield? Sal Ooh, Celestis is a good one. I can, I, I do love the Celestis. <laughs> Celestis is like the opposite of, <laughs> it's like the opposite of a uh, of farmhand. I just absolutely love that card. Probably way more than I should, way more than anyone else does. <laughs> but I'll just jam Celestis and everything. It like just always works out for some reason. All right, so get our lands back back up. Zalus just sounds good. Circuit Mender, Karn. Ugh. I don't know if we can actually, can we actually get ourselves to playing a Karn? So maybe Extraction Specialist is more of a sideboard option. Circuit Mender. What is Circuit Mender? I know it, is it ETB gain life leaves a battlefield draw? ETB gain two life leaves a battlefield draw card. Cheap enough to hit with, with Elspeth. So if it gets hit by Liliana, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, Salus just is so good. How do we fit all this stuff in though? Yeah, I feel like as we're building it this way, I feel like Sarah Paragon is gonna go up in value quite a bit. What do we cut though? Angel of Vengeance is super good. Uh, Dragonfly suit, is that an actual standard? Oh, it is. Hmm, hmm. Ooh, Ao is so sweet too. Would a second of Jano be worth it? Possibly. We might add it back in. I mean, right now we got 20, we have 24 lands. I don't think we can go below 24. <laughs> I don't know about the if a Golden Argosy had flying, I would be totally on board. As it is, actually, maybe Circuit Mender is not gonna make it. How is Destroy Evil? How do we find room for the rest of these cards? Like Ao, like maybe Elspis not worth it. Like if we trim Elspis. Because Ao can get Sarah Paragon. And Sarah Paragon can get our stuff back from the graveyard. Maybe, maybe we're heading, maybe we're heading in a positive direction. Maybe. How about Destroy Evil? Is that actually, is that actually worth it? <laughs> Paragon is cheating. Paragon's so good, though. Yeah, farewell. Farewell's in the sideboard at the moment. <laughs> so what other sources of card advantage do we have? Wait, is it bugged? Oh, I didn't realize. Par oh, Paragon's literally cheating. Wait, is Paragon bugged? Hey, what's up, Abzad Wolf? How are you? Good to see you, good to see ya. So maybe we Elspeth in the sideboard? How How is it bugged? Elspeth in the sideboard. So, Ejano, Ao, Depopulate, Paragon, Celestis. All right, let's bring one, let's go three Bank Busters in the main deck, one Celestis in the main deck. So the upside of Informant is Informant is a way to get cards in the graveyard for Invoke Justice, although I think a lot of that's gonna, 
going to happen naturally. All right, let's let's look at our sideboard. Sideboard. So we need farewell. Knockout blow. Good against red creatures. Sunset revelry. Oh, we have way too many sideboard cards. <laughs> Extraction specialist. I kind of like that. We have so many sweepers. Maybe we don't need this Vanquish the Horde or this temporary lockdown or this specialist. Four farewells. That might be. How about that? How's how's this look? Did we improve the deck or do we make it worse? Guardian of Benalia instead of Informant. Ooh. Hmm. Oh, do I not have any? Maybe I don't have any Guardians. Guardian of Benalia. Two mana, two, two, and list. When an list cries to, discard a card game's indestructible, tap it. That is a way to get cards in the graveyard. Oh, I kind of like the looting on Informant. I don't know how often we're going to enlist. Let's let's try it like this. Let's try it like this. Let's see if this works. What's the point of wedding announcement in the deck? Wedding announcement is mostly a card advantage engine, I think is probably what it does best. It's also an enchantment for our land card draw plan. Is this mid-range now rather than control? Hmm, maybe. Maybe now that we... Fewer Wardens. Uh, is what, what do you think is better, Warden or AO? That's kind of where we're at is like... Our top end threats, Wardens... Well, maybe... What about two and two? I guess we could go down a restoration. How about two and two? Is that is that acceptable? Warden way better than AO. Warden for control. All right, let's try this split. Let's try this split and see where we end up. I think we broke it. I think we broke it. I played a list similar to this a few days ago. So then our spikes did not go well for me. Yeah, so far we started off pretty bad. Richard swears by this list. He's been killing it. He 5-0'd. He's been playing on Moto, and he sent me a message last night and said he 5-0'd a league with it. And uh, and then it's, like, super, super good. But then we just O2'd and <laughs> did not feel super good to us. War and A are both good, but Invoke Despair is inconsistent. Uh, Invoke is so powerful, though. Like, yeah, it can be inconsistent, but it's also, like, really strong. Does Richard not play Arena? Not, not really anymore. He used to. But now he now he's mostly went back to uh, five zero. Richard is like sneaky good at magic. <laughs> he doesn't get the credit he deserves, but Richard is actually like legitimately really good at magic. Moto players are happy they can finally play with the land they've been sitting on for years. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> that's probably part of it. Ooh, discard a permanent mana. Oh, look at this combo! Boom, boom, free bank buster. Free Bank Buster. Uh, oh, and that means we can draw two with Reliquary. Look at these synergies. Look at these synergies. How good do you think the Brothers War is going to be? Do you think there will be broken cards? I'm expecting it to be a strong set. I am. I think they're like such iconic characters. I don't know how wizards can make it not strong. Yeah, that's kind of one of the synergies we're, we're going for to actually generate card advantage. We'll see. Oh, she older, eh? She old red. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, flip the saga. Tick up on the saga. Play the reliquary. Play wedding announcement. Pass the turn. I mean, pretty much every pretty much every artifact set in the game's history has been broken. <laughs> I don't know if I can think of an example of an artifact set that did not have banned cards. Is there one? Like Urza's block was broken. Mirrodin, Skull Clamped, Affinity Stuff banned. Uh, New Phyrexia, <laughs> the Jason Stoneforge Mannings. 
Uh, Kaladash? We had a ton of bannings in Kaladash. Like, maybe... 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 Maybe they cracked it by now. They are going towards more colored artifacts. So maybe... Maybe that will... Uh, maybe that'll fix it. I don't know about this attack for our opponent. That does not seem... Oh, I don't know about that block for me. I always forget that that has death touch. Wow, that was pretty bad. <laughs> I take it back, opponent. You were the correct one. We have a new... Wow, that was bad. We have a new donation from Dayan Wildfire. $2 donation. The new Is It Warhammer Commander makes you want to build a CDH deck. Abuse Underworld Breach other evil cards to win with Grape Shot and a Storm Count of 40. Yeah, that sounds sweet. That is a... I think that is maybe one of the coolest cards from that set so far. We're at 13. 13A. Hmm. I guess we just got to do this. I want to do other things. Huh. Maybe I've gained a new appreciation for... For the power of just drawing a planes every turn. <laughs> now now we're actually wishing we hit a land drop. Maybe, maybe farmhand's better than we thought. Opponent passes. We get drained again. Hmm. Well, Celestis. And... Oh, are we drawing? I think we gotta draw with Bank Buster. Yeah, draw with Bank Buster. Ouch. All right, there's our land. Painfully. Take up Wandering Emperor. Pass the turn. The shielder has been doing some serious work. We only went down one restoration, and we went up a land. We have 25 lands now, so we do have more lands overall. The shielder is punishing our card draw plan, though. We have these double reliquaries, and we got the full setup. We got the artifact and the enchantment, so we have draw four with the lands on the battlefield and Sarah Paragon to get them back. Uh, we just got to deal with these shielders first. Infernal Grasp kills a token. Sure, sure, sure. Can we kill the Shieldred? Opponent passes. Oh, well, Depopulate does kill the Shieldred. We have Destroy Evil in the deck still. We didn't cut that. We have a new donation. Bolt Snap Bolt MTG $5 donation. Hey, Mr. Olive. Has Tolarian Terror gotten it against odds yet? It is not. Although, let me let me double check that I'm thinking of the same card. Yeah. Although I will tell you, there is a Telerian Terror, a deck with Telerian Terror coming up on the YouTube soon. So it hasn't been an against the odds, but it is it is going to get featured in the very near future. Well, okay. Go to combat. Attack with both. I think we're on the. I think we're on the Wrath the Shieldred plan. The Shield. Remember when everyone said Shielder was bad? Jeez. The Shieldred is dealt like all the damage just by existing. Um. So we have the board. Get rid of the Shieldred. Finally, Pona gets to draw a card. Wedding announcement number two. But this is where I think... I think we should be able to outgrind our opponent. Uh, I guess we can take down. Let's make a samurai. Go. During spoiler... When, when Shielded first came out, the, the reaction was that it wasn't good. Like, that was... That was, like, the initial... Like, the initial reaction to Shielded, from what I remember, was disappointment. Am I am I misremembering that? I remember like Shielder getting spoiled and everyone was like, boo, it's not that good. That is true. Compared to the fake Shielded, which was like well, that card I don't even know. If you're gonna fake a card, if you're gonna do a fake leak, power it down a little bit. 
You it, like the odds that the card that you're making a fake of is the most busted card that's ever been printed is pretty low. So it's gonna be more believable if you just power it down, just power it down a smidge, and you will have much more success with your faking. Yeah, the fake one, Ward Discard 2 was just like, it was, its abilities were ridiculous, it was unkillable. That card would have been so ridiculous. All right, let's start doing sweet things. So we get to, oh, look at this synergy. Look at this synergy. Tap, tap, sack roadside reliquary, draw two cards. Yes, yes, artifact and enchantment. And then it gets better, Sarah Paragon comes down, Roseide Reliquary returns like it had never happened. So we get to do it again, count around this. Oh, I like this synergy. I haven't really seen too many people playing the with Roadside Reliquary, but I feel like Roadside Reliquary Sarah Paragon could be a thing. I feel like that could be a thing. And then, whoa, welcome to the fish ball. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super TV, thank you, thank you, thank you. Spoil a fake forbidable, uh, forgettable comment. Everyone believe you, no one will care. That is true. <laughs> if you just had like a, like a, a cancel, if you were like, hey, look, cancel, coming back in Frexia, every single person would believe you and no one would blink an eye. They'd be like, yeah, okay, that's, that's probably true. <laughs> yep. I heard this uh, uh, ins uh, insane theory from someone. I don't know, I don't believe this, but someone had this, uh, I don't remember who told it to me, but apparently one of the theory about the leaks going around, like the like the fake Elish Norn is that, hmm. I don't know what to discard here. Let's discard AO. AO! I think this works. So we untap. We draw Jano. One, two. Actually, let's check the other one. Oh, the synergies, the synergies. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sack Roadside Reliquary, draw two. Replay the Reliquary. Invoke Justice. Get back, Ayo. Grow our stuff. Make a samurai. Oh, this deck's feeling good now. It's feeling good now. Hit the Sorin. Hit the Liliana. Oh, oh, it feels so much better. Wait, what are we getting punted for? What are you now? Oh, but I heard, so the theory someone told me, and I don't think this is true, but it was a, I guess an interesting theory, was that Wizard sends out fake spoilers and they send different ones to to each people. Do you remember Game of Thrones? Do you remember do you remember the the Game of Thrones where they're going to send uh I can't remember her name. Cersei and Jamie's daughter. They're going to send her to Dorne and they told each member of the each member of the council like a different place that they were going to send it to. One was to Dorne, one was to this house, one was to this house. And the idea was that once it leaked out, they would know who leaked it because yeah, leak seeding essentially. They would know who uh, they would know who leaked it because each person had a different a different name. Um, I someone told me that, that they think that's the what's going on with wizards and like the Elish Norn. That it's not that it's fake, but it's uh, a leak seed for wizards to try to to try to figure out who's leaking it. So they sent all these cards to a bunch of different people. I. I don't think that's likely. I think the problem I have with that theory, even though it is a like somewhat logical thing to do if wizards, wow, that was a blowout. Uh, it is a somewhat logical thing to do if wizards was uh, worried about leaks, 
But wouldn't they be, like, making incredibly valuable collectible cards? Like, could you imagine if the Elish Norn, if there was 20 people they were worried about leaking cards to, and they send them each a, a one of one Elish Norn that is printed on real magic cards and looks like real like a real magic card wouldn't that be a incredibly valuable expensive collectible and lead to all kinds of confusion when someone shows up with this like one of one elish norn the mechanist or whatever at a at their local game store and you find it on ebay for twenty thousand dollars or whatever <laughs> i feel like i feel like that would be a big a big problem with that theory in <laughs> disappearing favor yeah self can buzz <laughs> spontaneously after so after so long <laughs> they the real problem is whenever these theories come up like <sighs> the the auto uh, the, the auto tapper killed me the auto capital killed me when i cast channel that's what it always comes back to like i will believe your re <laughs> the re your ridiculous over the top conspiracy theory about like Wizards being a super villain when auto tapper works. When auto tapper works, come back to me and we can reevaluate. We can reevaluate the possibility of uh, wizards being a super villain doing very, very far out over the top things. Uh, for now, <laughs> I'm gonna go with no. Six hundred euro. What is the what is the conversion rate at the moment? Is it is that about six hundred U.S. dollars as well? Um, do we want to change anything? Modern has gotten a lot more expensive, which is a bit of a bummer. Uh, hmm. Elspeth seems good. Maybe the farewell. We do want to, we do want to make sure we don't get got by. Ooh. All right, running like that. Shieldred, I'm scared of, uh, a little scared of Shieldred. So if you want to build a $600 modern deck, what would, what would I build? Modern's an expensive format. $600 does not go that far. So if you're looking at tier decks in that price range, burn, mono green Tron. <laughs> I don't know if I could recommend anyone building mono green Tron. Mill. Mill's a deck that's really come up in the meta uh, recently, the last few sets. Dredge, I don't think you can really build Dredge as your one modern deck. It's just too, too hateable. Like, when people aren't prepared for it, it's great. When people are prepared for it, though, you're not gonna, you're not gonna win a game. Um, honestly, like, if you're coming at this from a competitive perspective, if you're coming at it from, I want to play in tournaments, I only have 600 uh, euros to spend or whatever, it's probably burn. Burn has been good forever. It probably will be good forever. Life King gets printed. Hate cards get printed. And burn, it's just always like a tier one, tier 1.5 modern deck. So as long as you enjoy the play style, if you're looking at it from that perspective of like wanting to play in tournaments, it the, the right answer is probably burn. It's like cheap and it's just always competitive. Some of the other decks, like Dredge, it can be really good for a while, and then it gets really bad. Affinity has really risen up in the meta, but Affinity is also a deck that they could print a better hate card, and suddenly it's going to drop back down in the meta when the next set comes out. I feel like Burn is just like a really safe choice for always being, for always being decent in modern on a relatively, on a relatively low budget. So I guess that's the direction to go, unless you just hate playing Burn. If you just hate the play style, then that probably is not the best advice. Man, let's discard this. Hmm. Land? One, two, three, four. Eh, let's discard the farewell. Farewell's forever away from being good. Is 8 whack still a good budget option? Well, you know what I was doing this morning night? <laughs> I was actually just recording matches with a with an updated version of 8 Whack with Runvel Horde Master for a bunch of magic. So uh, we're gonna find out together soon. Upside is Runvel Horde Master. I think is actually legit good. Downside is modern meta is kind of a little bit hostile to to going wide with small creatures. Uh, Fury is just like such a blowout. <laughs> so we'll see. I'm still I'm still trying to figure it out, but. I think that Runvel Horde Master is like really good in the deck. Well, all right, wedding announcement, go. 
token about it is in fact uh, viable as well or do I simply go burn so I think in fact has been okay recently from a like tier competitive standpoint I think that burn is better and it's more consistently better if that makes sense like burn seems like it's just usually always pretty good when in fact is another one of those decks that it's been tier one and then it's tier three and then it's tier one burn is just like always always relatively high tier so i guess it depends on your goal too are, are is your goal to play tournaments uh is your goal to play this one deck for the next few years or for the next few months if you're just playing for fun then you got then you got more options then some of the much of brew decks and just fun decks that we play come into the conversation but a lot of those are decks that i wouldn't recommend is your like primary deck to play tournaments they can be good decks to like spike a tournament with and they're super fun to play but as far as like consistent results over the next few years most of them probably aren't gonna gonna give you that and burn like burn has a reputation of being really simple but when it comes down to it burn's actually Burn is actually a lot more complicated than uh, than people give it credit for, especially to play Burn optimally. Like, to really play Burn well, uh, watch, like, Patrick Sullivan or someone that's actually, like, legit good at Burn play Bird. They play it different than, than I would, than you would, than most people would. Well, all right. Good thing we still got this Destroy Evil. I'm gonna destroy this Evil Shield Rid. Well, this actually works out pretty nice. So, opponent takes up in response... We're gonna blow up shield red. Actually, maybe we don't do it in response. Okay, this still works out. We get to discard Elspeth. Discard the Elspeth. See how our opponent attacks. Blow up the shield red and then invoke Elspeth back into play. It's actually a pretty sweet turn. And opponent's down to one card and we got the grinding going now we got the grinding going so we played two two games with the initial build and we did not have much success and then we rebuilt the deck to uh focus on roadside reliquary of all things and this is our what first match but it's uh it's felt much better so far that is also true <laughs> burn is also strong enough that you can play it badly and still have success with it well we get to get back in elspeth Target ourselves. I won't let a few thugs threaten this Make the tokens three threes. Hmm. Uh, how do we do this? So we take down Elspeth. Yeah, let's just take down. We're probably going to lose our Elspeth, but that's fine. Uh, restoration of Ajamo. Get a planes. Actually, do we even care about Lily? <sighs> I don't even know if we want to kill the Lily. <laughs> Is this Lily even bad for us at this point? Maybe we defend the Elspeth? Well, if we try to defend the Elspeth, they take down an attack. Yeah, all right, whatever. I guess, I guess we'll just kill it. This lets us draw a card, too, with Wedding Announcement, which is good. So, opponent's going to block. Lily down. Draw. Oh, Ao! <laughs> the other reason to play Ao in the deck is I just like saying Ao. <laughs> it's my favorite card to draw, not because it's good. I <laughs> I just love saying Ao. <laughs> so, opponent is Elspeth. We get drained. Hmm. Discard a planes. Get back Rafines and format. Discard a Giano. Get shield ridded. Well, roadside reliquary. Ayo! Get down the AO, pass the turn. Can we beat the Shieldred? Dare you go! Welcome to the Fishbowl. First time sub. Thank you for your subscription. Big super duper. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Liliana the Veil. Oh, I don't think I told you this. So, over the weekend. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, we'll just 
sack the Rafim's informant. I think we need to keep the AO alive this turn. Oh, Sanctuary Warden. That's a, that's a good one. We still got to find a way to beat this AO, though. This AO, or beat this Shieldred, is just kind of draining us out of this game. Well, I guess we're in race mode. Hit our opponent. Down to 16. Sanctuary Warden. Man, we're not, we're not going to draw. We're not going to draw. I'm worried about the Shieldred. Opponent gains life. Can we beat the Shieldred? We got the big white things. How about it? Wait, how do we tell them it's pronounced ow and now ao? There the the name is literally two two letters. Letter A and letter O. <laughs> a O. <laughs> how can I possibly be mispronouncing a two-letter word? <laughs> oh, it's not even a I, I know some of them are long and tricky. Some of them are long and tricky, I get that. I know, I, I fully admit I mess them up on occasion, but it's it's two letters. A-O. <laughs> yeah, it can remove counters to, to draw. The problem is we're trying not to die to shield red. That's kind of our concern at the moment. This has vigilance, right? It does. This doesn't. Well, all right, big attack. We make a token. Yeah, this time I think we have to. All right, down to four. Oh, thank goodness. All right, they block with the shoulder, so we need Jano it away. Uh. Actually, is there a way to do this properly on Arena? Oh. Uh, is there is there a way we can I don't know if I trust Arena. So the optimal way to do this is to wait until after damage is dealt. And then Ijano, in case this is a removal spell, but I I don't trust my ability to do that on Arena. Uh So I think we're just going to do it this way because I don't trust Arena or myself on Arena for that matter. Okay. Well, it worked. It worked. We didn't die. Uh, Bank Buster. Rafine's Informant. And we should be good now. So you can do it. You just got to go full control. I really wish... What do you think about... The idea of Arena just having the phases laid out like Magic Online. Like, would that be... Would that be too... Would that be too awkward for some reason? Like, why Why isn't that an option? I always like how it's set up on Magic Online where you can just be like, okay, click the, the damage phase. In this turn, it'll stop on the damage phase. Or unclick it, and then it won't stop there. Screen... Yeah, I guess... And I guess, like, if Arena's for new players, then it's not necessary, maybe, because, yeah, for new players, it's just not really, it's not really going to be used, and maybe it's intimidating and makes the game look more complicated than it is. Mobile, that's, ooh, okay. Mobile, that's another, that's another good argument. Well, this is going to hurt a little bit. I don't know if it hurts enough, though. So we get meatballed, but our opponent still just dies, I think. That felt so much better. Hey, what's up, Ozzy Dave? How are you? So we started with a... I should export this deck uh, in case people want the list. So we started with a, with Richard's build of the deck, and we didn't have much success with it. It felt like we were drawing too many planes. I feel like our updated build, though, it actually felt sweet. I liked it. I liked the updated build. I mean, we only played one game so far, but... We were able to grind with a uh, with the black deck, which is kind of what you want. All right, updated updated deck list coming into the chat. Uh, hey Seth, I made an attempt to make a deck that makes Karn usable. Tell me what you think. Ooh. 
Have we drawn Spirited? I don't think we have. <laughs> I don't think we've seen a Spirited Companion yet. I mean, maybe with this new setup, maybe, maybe, oh, there's, well, now we get to see. Maybe with the new setup and the card advantage from Roadside Reliquary, maybe we could play the Farmhand now. Maybe Farmhand would be good now. Because really, there were a couple of times where we were like, we just want to hit our land drop. Like, I don't care what's happening. We just need to hit our land drop. And Ambition Farmhand is good there. Off of off of what? Hey, -o! <laughs> you know, even if it's uh, not correct, which I'm sure y'all are right, and that is not correct. I will I will grant that. In all honesty, I'm probably still gonna keep doing it because I enjoy it. So <laughs> just just be warned. <laughs> Yeah, this might be good for farming. New to the channel, glad to be here. Seth, any good ideas for Golden Argosy or capitalizing on ETB effects? Uh, let's get our free bank buster here. Discard the bank buster, reanimate the bank buster. Play the land. Pass the turd. So, Golden Argosy, I think the challenge is... I think the challenge is it's very blockable. That's my concern for it. So I think that there's, so I think that there is, um, there's a way to take advantage of the blink stuff. You play stuff with ETB triggers, whatever, Titan of Industry, Sanctuary Warden, uh, Spirited Companion, you crew it up, you attack, but it's, I think often gonna be a one shot at best, in worst case, it gets killed and you get a zero shot out of it because it dies to removal. So I think uh, maybe that would be another good one to put on on for against the odds. Because I feel like it's... I love Blink decks. I love the synergies. I just wish it was more... My opponents really build around this uh, Vahar there. I just wish it was a little bit... <clears throat> A little bit more resilient. I wish it evasion. If that card had evasion, I would be all about it. Without evasion, I think it's just going to be a one-shot blink effect a lot of the time. All right, Shieldred, sure, sure, sure. Flip it. Well, crew the bank buster. We're gonna see if we can uh We're gonna see if we can jank him out with this wandering emperor. We didn't play it on our opponent's turn. Alright, opponent sniffed it out apparently. Hit him with the bank buster, play the land, play the wedding announcement. I was thinking that since we didn't we passed with four man up and didn't cast Wandering Emperor, maybe our opponent would think we didn't have it and we'd be able to get him with uh putting the counter on our on our bank buster, but it didn't didn't work out. Oh, so this weekend, so weird. I need your I need your expert dog advice chat. So so Bear, everything was going good. He was doing his bear stuff. You know, we were going out for walks. He was uh, playing with other dogs when we were going for walks. He was he was just perfectly normal. And then this was this was Sunday afternoon. Perfectly normal, living his best puppy life. Then all of a sudden he just got like super 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 tired. He was laying down. I thought oh, he must just be he must just be worn out. It's been a long day. But then as we were driving home, he was like like he usually rides like next to the window or sticks his head out the window and he was like passing out like literally falling asleep against the door uh as we were driving home and i was like that's so weird like he must really be tired and then we got home and he wouldn't get out of the car he just like wouldn't move i finally got him yes uh thank you for all your veterinarian expertise chat so i so i got him back in i finally got him inside and he was just like he wouldn't move he wouldn't do anything he was he was like hardly responding like he would just lay there and not move you could call him he wouldn't move and i was freaking i was freaking out i thought something was like seriously wrong with him i was very worried and then i was like well it's it's sunday night i can't really go to the vet anyway i tried calling the vet and uh 
they just had some like you can go to an emergency vet somewhere if you have an emergency but we're not open till tomorrow so like well i guess we're gonna ride out the night and then and then we'll go from there and the next morning he was fine the next morning he he got up and like drank a whole bowl of water during the middle of the night and then the next morning he was his normal self begging for treats doing all his normal stuff like nothing had ever happened like just it was very very strange heat stroke heat stroke is a that's an interesting that's an interesting theory maybe it was heat stroke that could be just needed sleep and water Oh, I, I left out part of it, too. He also ate a bunch of grass and then threw it up. Like, I didn't realize that when we were outside walking, he he ate a bunch of grass. And then he threw that up on the when we got back in the house after I finally got him inside. He threw up one one time. So it made me think it was maybe his, his stomach. Probably ate some plant. He didn't agree with him. My dog has done that. Yeah, I might still I might still have to just take him to the vet to, to double check, make sure everything's cool. Hmm. All right, well... Yeah, I guess we pass the turn and start bank busting. What does everyone play Shieldred? There's so many, so many Shieldreds we've run into today. Ooh. All right, let's get rid of the Shieldred. The Shieldred has been doing bad things to us. Shieldred finally, thank goodness, down about it adapts. My dog eats grass all the time. Yeah, I think dogs do that. <laughs> so, so many shieldreds being drawn. Opponent. Passes. Rafine's informant. Good card. Not so good against shieldred. Well, um. Go to combat. We might as well do some attacking. We gotta try to. We gotta try to wrath. They shouldn't have negate in their main deck, right? Get in. Yeah, we gotta we gotta kill the shieldred, so we don't really have a choice but to wrath. Uh, all right, depopulate. Opponent. <laughs> okay, loots. Gains life, discards cut down. No negates. No negating. <laughs> uh oh. Do I actually have negate? That would be so bad. We really need this. Sh <laughs> Bounces, Shieldred. I mean, I guess you could say opponent is a shielded deck. Is Enchantress good? Well, let's draw a card where there's no shielded. Draw a card. Land and land. Um, is Enchantress good? Yeah, Enchantress has improved a lot since. Enchantress has improved a lot since uh, Modern Horizons 2, so it has actually become a pretty a pretty good deck. It's still not exactly like tip top tier, but it is definitely way way stronger than it was before. Well, all right, Reckoner Bankbuster draws some Shieldred answers. Pelnet gets to do some tutoring. How good is how good is Cruelty of Gix? We've seen a lot of those today too. Is this going to be a standard staple? Hey, Seth. As a free-to-play player, I've been working on budget... Ooh, so can our spicy. Well, at least we're not getting shieldreded. Plays a land. Opponent. Drains us for two. Well, draw a card. Untap. Play the land. Hit you with... Ayo, uh, opponent. Down to nine. Well, Rafine's informant. Connive away. What are they reanimating here, Shieldred? 
never ending shielded reanimations. Well, discard restoration. Or a fiend's informant. We got to get all of our cards out now. <laughs> Before the shieldred comes. Phonant's going to cut down. Outwandering Emperor. <laughs> Phonant is spell fierce. All right. Well, that's it. Everyone's empty handed. Who wins this game? We're at seven. We're staring down Shieldred. We can't really cast anything. Discard Spirited Companion. All right. Put on adapts. <laughs> Even skipping the first steps of Cruelty, the latter two effects are worth uh, it for three and double black. Yeah, I think it actually is pretty... Uh, Pretty good. Oh, let me see Pyrano. Oh, I forgot to look at the Karn deck, too. Opponent reanimates Urtai. Okay. I'm gonna kill Ao. We draw even more Bank Busters. Well, let's go digging. Hmm. How do we get out of this? I think we have, like, too many bank busters at the moment. I'll get Spirited Companion. Draw a card. Another wedding announcement. Here comes the shield red again. There are no rares and mythics outside the mana base. Yeah, let me see, Perino opponent. Tenacious underdog. Goes to combat. Well, I mean... Crew block. Pony gets to draw a card. We need some removal. We need some removal. Found it. Falconar. Gonna kill the bank buster. Reliquary. Down to five. A land. Bank buster. Bank buster. Wedding announcement. Pass the turn. I think our opponent just played so many Shieldreds that we're not going to be able to win. <laughs> These Shieldreds are just getting us. Our opponent actually managed to do it by just like play Shieldred, reanimate Shieldred, reanimate Shieldred, play Shieldred. Opponent goes to combat. Attacks, attacks, attacks. Well, block, block, block. I guess we need a top deck. Shieldred makes me so sad. We have so many, so many cards that we can draw, but the Shieldred is just making it impossible. Gain some life. Opponent draws a card. So next turn, we get the Solkinar. Do we draw a card here? We'd go to one? We get the Solkinar next turn, but it's too late. We're not going to... They've chose all the options. The problem is... We're just dead. We're dead now. I think we're dead either way because of... Well, we have the wedding announcement. So if we find a Wrath... Yeah, I think we have to draw... It's a bummer, but I think we got to do it. So we drop to two. It's a planes and a reliquary. Well, all right. Uh, silly, silly people. Oh, I mean, that deck was just literally trying to protect children. That was, that was all that deck was trying to do, and it worked. That's the, that's the wildest part. Like... Shieldred's so absurd. Uh, so. 
So, 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 what do we do against Shieldred Tribal over there? We can bring in a bunch of Depopulates, I guess. Hmm. Oh, boy. that If it wasn't for that Shieldred Rain, I think we win that, like, incredibly easily. I mean, I guess that's a good testament to the power of Shieldred. But, yeah, like, that just... Shieldred by itself won the game. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I wouldn't say I hate Shieldred, but I think Shieldred, I think it's mostly funny because everyone would thought Shieldred sucked. <laughs> They're like, wait, no, like this card's, this card's busted. And everyone thought it was bad. Was like, huh? Like what? A, we must be looking at a very different card because, <laughs> because this card is busted. I do not know what you're talking about. Is it? Oh yeah. I forgot to, I forgot to look at your, uh, at your, is it Liz? Yeah, I think Belmore is like a, a super a super strong payoff for sure. Belmore, being able to pump your creatures, your entire team when you cast a spell is very, very strong. Yeah, that looks uh that looks sweet. It reminds me a little bit. We played uh an is it budget magic deck that had Belmore during your early access day. Kind of the the same idea. Then they have didn't they have a flame channeler. How is flame channeler bad? But yeah, I mean Belmore, cheap things, sling a bunch of spells. That's a pretty pretty effective way to uh, be aggro, I think. Does Shielder have the right price tag at thirty bucks? I think the question is how good is it going to be in how good is it going to be in Commander? Um, thirty bucks is a ton for a random standard card. On the other hand, thirty bucks is is a uh, probably about right for. Oh, jeez. Oh, okay, sure. But 30 bucks is is probably a pretty reasonable price for a, a standard staple that is also a commander staple. So I think that's what you're going to want to keep an eye out for. A bonnet. Passes. Wandering Emperor. Whew. All right. So opponent... A big believer in counter spells. Play a land passenger. So I guess our opponent's trying to be a, a control deck that's also playing a ton of creatures. I don't even know. A controlling mid range deck. A bonnet. Going to pass. Well, we will start drawing cards. Looks like our opponent has Urtai, perhaps. Well, Roadside Reliquary is pretty nice here. This is going to let us. Hopefully refill past the turn, and then hopefully Sarah Paragon can start getting stuff back. Bonus gonna loot, sure, sure, sure. Discards light up the night. How is standard feeling to you personally? Um, so I enjoy playing this standard format. I think it's very fun to play. I also think it's gonna lead to things getting banned, basically. Like, it's very fun to play, but, you know, I think the comparison, here's the comparison. Here's what it reminds me of. It reminds me of current modern. <laughs> it reminds me of current modern. There is a great amount of diversity if you will play black cards. Very similar to how, very similar to how there's a great amount of diversity in modern if you were built around Modern Horizons 2 cards. If you refuse to play Modern Horizons 2 cards, you're probably gonna have very little success in the format. You're just gonna have a really bad time. But if you're willing to build around Modern Horizons 2 cards and to a lesser extent, other new cards, Modern Horizons 1 cards, then there's a ton of different decks that are competitive. I view Standard currently the same way. I enjoy playing it, I think it's really fun, but uh, you are playing it on incredible hard mode if you do not put black cards in your deck. And the, the math backs that up. Like, my concern is... Uh, I don't know. The numbers, the numbers just don't look good. Like, that's the thing that scares me. Like, if you uh, if you look at just the most played cards, Neog Masker 75% of decks, like, it kind of blows my mind that that's not a, something that has led to an outcry. I guess the only thing is... It's still super early in the format, so maybe people are just in wait and see mode. But you can't have you can't have a card at seventy five percent of the meta. Like that means that three out of every four matchups you play 
are black decks and maybe even more than that because there's probably some black deck that don't have Miyuk massacre i'm sure it's happened before although almost all of them do so i don't know i, I guess that's what it comes down to the format's enjoyable to play uh the matchups you're seeing them right now like matchups are long and grindy and interactive and they go back and forth and you know whatever like there's a lot of awesome things about it but when it comes down to it it's kind of it's kind of black or bust well crew up the bank buster do some attacking opponent takes it well, play the land. Hmm. I would like our opponent to tap down at some point, but... <sighs> Alright, pass the turn. We're going to start cracking relic queries at some point. Opponent loots. Discards. I mean, what do you all think is standard? Where are you at? Like, is a format good because it's fun? Or does it need diversity to be good? I think it probably partly... It probably partly depends just on your... On your personal taste as well. Well, okay. Uh, blow up the terror. Pay the two. Okay, this is good. Well, sack this, draw two. Now we can just untap in Wrath. And we get to draw a card from this Urtai. Sure, sure, sure. That is fine. Opponent counters our removal spell. Well, we get to untap. Play the land. Depopulate, sweep the board. No looting for our opponent, just lets it go. I'll run out, wedding announcement. Pass the turn. Oh, I think, I think the roadside reliquary is a sleeper. We might get a new Urza in Yagmoth card in Brothers War. I mean, and that's the other thing about the standard format is we got a new standard set coming in. A new standard set coming in November. Like six weeks will be in spoiler season or have a new set. So I'm kind of also fine with just like, I'm enjoying standard right now. I think it's fun. Yeah, you play black decks all the time, but I don't know. I'm fine with just like playing black decks for the next against black decks for the next six weeks, as long as the matchups are still like fun and interesting, and then see where we go from there. I think standard is great, but it's just arena driven. It's too expensive to experiment. Moto is filled with jund, uh, with jund refugees. I think the arena does have a impact on it. Well, I mean, it's September 13th, so. I mean, that was a rough estimate, but roughly, I think, six weeks. I mean, two weeks to get to the end of September, and then four weeks four weeks for October, and then it's the beginning of November. And I mean, the good news is, if, like I said, like it, the games and the actual matchups are, I think, are super fun to play. So I think that's a... That's a big vote in favor of this format. At least, uh, at least for me. Well, Sarah Paragon. I haven't seen many dissipates. Well, play the land. In one, two, three, four. F oh, maybe we can't do this. Yeah, let's just take Reliquary. Draw a couple cards. Play a bank buster. The problem with uh, running out Invoke Justice is we get spell pierced, <laughs> which would be painful. I mean, I think that the next sets are going to be powerful too. So I think things are going to change. Although really, <sighs> I, I would not, here's my prediction. 
My prediction is Black stays really good, but I would not be surprised if some point in the next year, Meat Hook Massacre ends up getting banned in standard. That would not be... That would not be shocking to me. This is not a call for a ban. Like I said, I'm having a lot of fun playing this format. So I'm not calling for a ban. I'm not saying ban Meat Hook Massacre, but it's already been rebalanced in Alchemy. And I think that if there ever was a point where he banned something, that's going to be it. Ooh, the Karn deck. I forgot. I forgot Motherfogger. Oh, Pony just lets it go. Interesting. I will I will look at it momentarily. Play the land. Go to combat. I mean, this deck is grinding now. Hit ya. Going to cut down. Sure. I mean, our mono white deck is just outdrawing Grixis at the moment. <laughs> Wedding announcement. Opponent has a negate. Sure. Invoke justice. Get back. Wedding announcement. Grow the token. Draw some cards. Your go. Thurgus, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. About it, tenacious underdog. Gonna hit us. Gonna draw some cards. I mean, we've just drawn so many more cards. Yup, opponent. Roadside Reliquary. Sleeper. Sleeper hit. Play the land. Invoke justice. Spirited companion. Do you have more counters? Opponent has a negate. Oh, uh, well, go to combat, attack ya, hit ya. Opponent. <laughs> Down to one card, one card left, bounces. Well, one, two, draw two. And pass the turn, make a token. Scusa! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bought my first DMU packs today. No tabernacle, but got a foil timeless lotus. Have you pulled anything yet? Honestly, I haven't really opened. I haven't really opened any uh any packs from this set. This has been one of the rare sets where I have not not fed my pack cracking addiction. I think my plan is to try to get. Yeah, we'll take it. I think my plan is to try to get uh, the Dominaria remastered. I think that's what I'm... I think that's what I'm going to spend my money on instead of the main set. Ooh, March is actually kind of good here. But remastered just seems so... Oh, it seems so sweet. All right, so how do we do this? Sarah Paragon. That's not getting negated. Can get back Spirited Companion. Draw a card. Play a Reliquary. Go to combat. Hit ya with the token. Wow, opponent's gonna block. Sure. I'll pass the turn. Make a token, put it cycles. Can we win the grind? Wizard's trying to get uh to make me really mean in commander by making it so all my DMU list cards I've opened so far are contamination and doomsday. <laughs> Contaminations. Oh, that one's brutal. That one is brutal. Hmm. So opponent's gonna meet hug. Now let's see if they drew in the gate. Wandering Emperor. Counter on the Paragon. Sure. Sweep away our non-Paragon creatures, but Paragon survives. Wait, what is the what is the bug with Sarah Paragon? Someone earlier said it was bugged. 
I haven't noticed a bug with it yet, though. <laughs> All right, you did it, opponent. You found a way. Mount Sanctuary Warden. Crew up. Bank Buster. Crew up. Bank Buster. Counter on a Bank Buster. Kill ya. <laughs> ah, it worked. <coughs> it's bugging IRL, so it doesn't work under the rules. Oh, chat. Speaking of, hey, see you, Jaguar. Thanks for hanging out. Have a have a wonderful a wonderful day. Oh, also a quick reminder that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. If you need some magical cards, you can over at CardKingdom.com. Um, does anyone know? It, this is in the the old days of magic. Um. Does anyone remember a Wall of Roots infinite mana deck or something? That there was like, they made a rules change. I, I just heard about this from someone. I'm trying to piece it together. Um, that they made a rules change and people came to tournaments right after the rules change with decks built around activating Wall of uh, Roots like in response to itself a bunch of times to make infinite mana. Yes, is that is that an actual thing? It could make infinite mana between turns because there was a space between turns, so you could only activate it once each turn. But in this weird purgatory of between turns, you could make infinite mana with it. Oh, if anyone knows any place to to look up anything about that, let me know because I didn't know about that, and that's a that's a really interesting story. All right, let's look at let's look at Karn. Sorry, Mother Frogger, it's been a uh, <laughs> It's been on the list, been on the list. Karn Living Legacy, Herald of Anguish. Okay, Battle at the Bridge. So kind of uh, an artifact, an artifact theme deck. I like, I mean, so I like that this tries to take advantage of Karn's ability to make an artifact every turn. I think that's a, uh, I think that's probably Karn's best chance is if the Power Stone is beneficial in some other way. I'm still questioning whether Karn, even in this context, is actually is actually good. Like, there's so many ways to make an artifact. Like, is Karn making a single power stone each turn? Is that better than the other ways to make an artifact? That's what I that's what I get stuck on with with decks like this. And I just don't really I don't really know the answer. But I do think, I do think that as far as uh, an attempt to make Karn good goes, I do like the attempt. I think this is a good attempt. If there's any style of deck that might make it good, I think it's going to be a deck like this that can take advantage of just the fact that Karn makes an artifact every turn. I just worry that there's like ah, easier ways to make an artifact every turn that that don't require that don't require Karn. So that's kind of my worry about Karn. Ooh, let me let me see Psycho Magi. Um. All right, opponent passes. I'm gonna play the land. Get down the bank buster, I guess. We have these two invoke justices. Let's see if we can do anything with it. When someone says at the end of your turn, is it actually just the end of the turn or is it actually just before the end of the turn or just after the end of the turn? My question comes from this experience I have. I have a mirror enforcer in play. My opponent has two untapped Volshuk sorcerers. Tap to ping something. And this is, and he does the following. At the end of your turn, tap two sorcerers to deal two damage to enforcer. Untap, it would be my untap. Upkeep, I tap two again to deal two damage, sending it to the graveyard. He stated that the response end turn uh, he stated that response end turn is in between my end turn and before his untap step does the damage just not go away the cleanup phase is he correct i'm so confused magic was weird back in the day i am i do not understand i do not understand what's going on so the argument was that 
was that a real thing? Was there a time when you could have damage carry over to your opponent's upkeep? What is that even arguing about? Honestly, end of turn shouldn't be uh, allow any kind of trigger. The turn just ends. It's too complicated from a rules perspective, and plays that go there are completely not intuitive. I'm I'm gonna have to research more of this. Not live on stream because that's the worst time to try to figure this out. But I'm like legit confused. Well, let's draw with Bankbuster. We're going to have to kill the shield, Red. Opponent passes. Well, upkeep. Pay for. Exile and invoke. Get rid of shield, Red. All right, all right, all right. Marching that shield right out of here. No reanimating this one. It is dead forever. Ooh. hey <laughs> We'll see if we can get it down, but I do like I do like Sigeo. Was magic better with damage on the stack? If you've been playing for a long time, Unseen Spectre, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Good, uh, big scoop cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm doing well, Unseen Spectre. Hopefully you are doing well as well. If you've been playing for a long time, what what set of rules do you find most do you find most appealing? Was damage on the stack actually good? I wonder about some of those old rules. Like, were they really, uh, were the upside of like adding some cool plays and complexity, was that upside worth the downside of making the game harder for new players to pick up? When I, cause damage on the stack, I don't, I don't feel like that added like, Enough to the would magic get to where it is today with commander and tons of people playing if we had all those weird old quirky rules that technically make like for some cool plays and some like you know neat synergies that you wouldn't see anymore. I feel like in most cases, honestly, that Wizards has kind of has kind of made the right calls with rules changes. And that most of the rules changes like actually end up making the game better instead of worse. Last time, Seth, for Sarah Paragon, I think the bug is it gives the effect to other creatures when you cast one from your graveyard. Oh. So if you cast it from your graveyard, other creatures get... Other creatures gain life when they leave the battlefield? I mean, what's, what's one... One example of a rules change that actually was clearly like a negative for the game. Can we think of any? Are there any? Well, let's draw with Bank Buster. Play the land. Pass the turn. Leave up the March, which is never going to kill Talarian Terror, but might try to kill this Vahar. We can chump the, the Terror for the time being. Opponent discards run his Vortex. We drop to 16. Old, ooh, Mulligan Roy I would agree with. I do think that London Mulligan was a negative. I know I'm in the minority. Not everyone, not everyone believes that. But personally, I do, I do actually agree with that one. Uh, all right, let's... See if we can get rid of this Vahar. Overpay for some reason. All right, opponent doesn't even loot, just lets it go. Hmm. Well, play Sarah Paragon. Dissipate. I'll play the land. Sarah Paragon. No value to get from it past the turn. What removal do you have, friend? Can we close out this game? Oh, CMC to mana value. 
when they first did that change, I was I was a little skeptical. Uh, as, a, as someone who's been playing a while, I thought, man, a value, that sounds weird. But honestly, now that I've gotten used to it, I think that was a positive change, too. Mana value shorter. It's it's just like it's a let one less letter even when you abbreviate it. So I think that like just in general, that was another change that I would say actually ended up being a positive rather than a, a negative. Uh, this should be a good turn. Invoke justice for Paragon. Make a big Paragon. Spirited Companion, draw a card. Play the land, pass the turn. What's your favorite tri-color pair? Oh, there's a shieldred. There is a shieldred. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Favorite tri-color pairing. That's so tough. I love I love so many of them for different reasons. What do we do now? How do we how do we beat a shieldred? Can we beat a shieldred? Oh, favorite. Uh, so like Abzan is like the rhino colors. Vant. We've had some sweet Vant decks. Jeskai Scepter. Chant. There's there's so many options. That's one of the downsides of playing so many decks. I think most people when they play Magic. Uh, I feel like I missed a sub. Whose sub did I? Whose sub did I miss here? I heard the splash. Oh, we also got another. Oh, Nia Duck. Nia Duck. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, go to combat. Hit you with the Paragon. Step one. Opponent takes the beats. Opponent has two mana available. Now, let's... Play AO. Play a Jano. Bank Buster from the graveyard. Bonnet loots, Gade's life. Discards Tenacious Underdog. All right, pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Opponent gains some life. Can we beat the Shieldred? Can we beat the Shieldred? Opponent. Land spells were, yeah, very, very, very big innovation. Very positive innovation. Although creature lands have been part of, creature lands have been part of magic since the beginning. All right, opponent's going to draw eight few cards, gain a few life. We just need to find like a removal spell probably. Found it up to 28. Plays a land. Goes to combat. All right, uh, draw with Bank Buster. Ouch. Hey oh. Now untap. Oh, just a planes. Are we gonna lose to Shieldred again? Is that where this is heading? Seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, ooh, this should be good. All right, so go to combat. Hit our opponent with our flyers. Opponent down to 16. Ao, legend rule ourselves. Doesn't matter which one we keep. Go digging. Get a wandering emperor. Wandering emperor. Who harms my people must contend with me. Uh, make a samurai. Invoke justice. Ayo. Three, four, five, six, seven. Tick up, tick up, tick up. Wait, three, four, five, six, seven. So me hooks X. Five, but if they draw, all right. So let's do it this way. Grow that AO. Grow the Bank Buster. Keep the big AO. Mm. 
<laughs> oh, Resuda. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I think we're going counters. We got to try to close out the game. Grow the team. Pass the turn. That is a big evasive board. Can our opponent deal with it? We played around the Meat Hook Massacre. We got counters floating around everywhere. We can stop a shield rid. If we get in with the flyers, we should be able to close out the game, even through this ridiculous amount of life our opponent's gaining opponent. Undabbed. Can they find a way through? Sheldred's a scary card. Opponent. Looking at their mana. Thinking. Looting. Okay. That seems a little desperate. Seems a little desperate. Well, hopefully the counters close it out. We'll see how much removal our opponent has. They are a control deck. Opponent plays a land. I mean, blitzing the underdogs is fine. We can block those. Okay, meat hook X4. So it's going to keep the shield rid, but kill everything else. Okay. Stuff dies. We gained some life, thankfully. Oh, wait. Are we gaining more life than we should? Opponent. Passes. We get drained. Well, Sanctuary Warden. Remove a counter draw card. Get drained. Crew the bank buster. I mean, this is going to force our opponent to do something. Go to combat. Attack you. Those are some big, big AOs. Oh, come on. Just die. About it. Looking at the AO. Rona's Vortex. Okay, yeah, that... That works for now. Opponent goes to eight. Well, play Ajano. Oh, no! Oh, we need to float the mana first. Oh! That might be a problem. That might be a problem. Well, I guess this still works, actually, because we have Sarah Paragod. Float the mana, Ajano. Why can we not play it? I'm so confused. What is happening? Oh, we already... Hmm. I didn't think this would show us as an available card if we had already played it, but apparently it does. Well, okay. Well, play a bank buster. Oh, we got 28 seconds? Oh, God. Oh, God. Spirited Companion. Oh, we also have 28 seconds. That's not good. All right, get drained. Pass the turn. Opponent to taps. Get drained. Cruelty of Gix. Gonna do something. Reanimates. 16 seconds. Are we gonna time out? Reanimates at AO. Opponent.
passes, place a land, we untap, we get drained, kill Shieldred. Opponent negates. Oh. oh my goodness! BG Chef, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, that is the that is what you call a stream loss. <laughs> Yeah, that is the that is the classic stream loss. Hmm. I mean, it's a grindy format, but uh, I mean, we would have we would have won, right? There's essentially no way that we don't win. Hmm. Well, that's disappointing. Karn would have. What would what would Karn have done? Would Karn have added more time to our clock? <laughs> I love that I was waiting my phone to notify for your stream. Started two hours and nothing. Ugh. Yeah, notifications. I'm sorry, Magic Carp. You never know. Well, that was that was disappointing. I um I love you, Seth, but you are a very slow player sometimes. I mean, we're looking at deck lists. We're having conversations about things, so. That's uh that is how <laughs> that is how streaming goes if it's going to be interactive. I mean the other option is you can stream like some people do and just like pretend that chat doesn't exist and just play the game, but the whole reason I like streaming is to to be able to interact with the chat. How is Grixis Vampires on uh, the rank ladder? Uh, I mean it's got it's got a it's got black mana, so it should be decent. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like if you play the good black cards, you can play you can play pretty much whatever you want. It's gonna be good. <laughs> Grixis, John, Esper. As long as you got like Liliana, Mihook Massacre, Tenacious Underdog, Shieldred. I might be missing something, but basically you play like uh like all the <sighs> all the standard decks are kinda the same, but then they're kinda different. If you if you look at it. Like, look at these popular standard decks. Let's pull up. Let's pull up. All right, opponent gets in, hits us. Like, look at look at standard right now. Here's here's how standard works. So you look at these decks. Uh, the top eight are all black decks. Basically, what you do, and and this is this is a little life hack for playing standard. But you play the the black cards, and then you can add in what you want. So you play you play the. The Shieldreds, the Lilianas, the Black Removal Spells, the Meat Hook Massacre. Uh, you play basically the same package. Graveyard Trespasser might also be on the auto-include list. Black Removal, Meat Hook Massacre. This one doesn't have Liliana, but it's got the Invoke Despairs, the Shieldreds. Jund, kind of the same thing. Graveyard Trespasser, Shieldred, Liliana, Meat Hook Massacre, Rakdos, Shieldred, Liliana, Invoke Despair, Meat Hook Massacre, Tenacious Underdog. So basically... Basically, basically, like twenty-ish slots of your deck are dedicated to to the really good black cards, and then with the other like fifteen slots, you can play whatever color combinations or pet cards you want. That's so. So, Grixis Vampires, I think, is is on that list essentially. Like, uh, if you want to, you play Liliana, you play Graveyard Trespasser. Is Vampires actually on here? Yeah, same thing, basically. You play the Lilianas, you play the Meat Massacres, you play the Black Removal, you play Tenacious Underdog, and then your utility cards are like Evelyn and Corpse Appraiser and whatever, Kaido, whatever you, you decide. So, so yeah, I think that it's a it's a fine ladder deck from uh, from that perspective. Opponents got the Meat Hook Massacre. We're playing uh, we're playing on hard mode without without any black cards at all. Yeah, we got Me Hook Massacre. That's not ideal. Well, play the format. A sweeper here would be nice. Where's our Me Hook Massacre, Magic Gods? <laughs> play the Bank Buster. Well, let's see if we can stabilize. Pass the turn. Do you think Enchantment Hate would counter Me Hook Massacre? Uh, I don't think Enchantment Hate does anything against Me Hook Massacre. Let me, uh, so the thing is, like, let's say you have Terra's under or whatever. 
What makes Miyug Massacre good is it sweeps your board and immediately gets a bunch of triggers. Like, being able to blow it up the following turn has incredibly little value. Like, very, 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 very little value. So, no, I don't think that, uh, I don't think that that has a, that has a meaningful amount of value. If it's a counter spell that keeps it from hitting the battlefield, then that actually does have value. Well, opponent getting in, getting frisky. Gonna need some removal. Opponent's got off to a very aggro start here. I mean, I guess the Meehook Massacre enabled that, but... Yeah, we're just, like, slightly off curve. We can't see our Paragon plus play something. Pony called Anvil. Opponent sacks. Yeah, I think we're just getting aggroed out here. We draw another land, doesn't do anything. Hmm... <clears throat> So we're just dead, right? Yeah, we're just dead. All right, on to game two. Well, that was a quick one at least. Hey Seth, I've been wondering if you have ever played Ice Crown Scepter. It's a really sweet jank card. Um, <clears throat> I think we've played it in the somewhat distant past, but it could be a fun one to revisit. I feel like Scepter, Scepter is definitely a sweet jank card, although, I feel like it got a little bit less interesting once it became like a CDH or like commander combo piece. That's one of those cards that like back when no one played it anywhere, I really loved it. But then it became like a legit card in various formats. And now it's kind of like, eh, okay. Like the best thing to do is the infinite mana combo, blah, blah, blah. Like <laughs> that's, that's kind of, yeah. Like Scepter Silence or Scepter Orms Chant. Those synergies are super are super, super cool. So I think, like, for me, you just gotta... If it's the infinite mana, co mana combo, I'm just kind of like, meh. Like, uh, I've seen this before. But if you're doing something cool, like silence locking or something, it's pretty fun. But yeah, that could be a good one to revisit for uh, against the odds. But yeah, I don't know. I think Isaac Run Scepter is actually pretty pretty powerful. I think it would be on the, the top end of the curve as far as... As far as a uh, power level for against the odds, because it does see some like actual not in 60 card formats so much anymore, but uh, in commander, it actually sees legit play. Elite Arcanist is a new Isograd Scepter who I know we've never played our Elite Arcanist. I'm not even, I don't think I could tell you the text on it. I know it lets you do something, which is pretty profound. <laughs> it does something. I know it does something with spells. Elite Arcan is four mana human wizard. EDB's exile card from your hand. Pay X, copy the exile card. You can cast a copy without paying its mana cost. Oh, okay. So that's kind of, that's sweet. Yeah, so it actually is kind of similar to a scepter. Although it's a scepter that requires you to keep a, a four mana one, one on the battlefield, which yeah, Scepter Chant. That's one of the that's one of the brutal combos that I learned to play Magic on. Getting got by that, not being able to do anything. M Burns, Mana Burns, or Mister Burns. Down to eighteen. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, hopefully this farewell is gonna get our opponent good. Down to seventeen. Well, Spirited Companion. Draw a card, play the land, pass the turn, about it. So is there anything else that, what else uh, do you want to see that we haven't done yet in Dominaria Standard? Is there anything else that's uh, high on your, your list? Opponent gonna tick up. And we'll discard a land. Opponent discards braids. Sacks to ping. Hmm. How do we deal with a Liliana? Well, attack Liliana. Opponent's gonna block. We kind of want something in the graveyard for this Invoke Justice, but yeah, I think <laughs> there's a chance we just get Liliana ultimated here. Opponent ticks up. We discard a land. Opponent discards a land. Opponent plays a land. Plays a Sorin. 
Makes a vampire sex to ping. Yeah. Huh, this is a interesting draw for the sack deck. Well, play a land. Invoke justice. Get back spirited companion. Grow spirited companion. Draw a card. Attack Liliana, but our opponent's got the blockers. They never end. About him, blocks. Yeah, opponent's just all in on ultimating the Zillion, and I think it might work. We don't have an answer for it. Volt Surge. Okay, so not ultimating, but they still have the Planeswalkers for days. Well, I guess we want to land for the Sanctuary Warden now. Takes up Soren, draws a Volt Surge. Well, that is a land. Play the land. Sanctuary Warden. Remove a counter, make a token. Although this still works because they can... Well, at least we're not going to get Liliana ultimated. But they Volt Surge the token, ticked out the Liliana. Yeah, I don't know why Farewell doesn't have the Planeswalker line. That's actually very weird to me. You never know. It's so strange what wizards, when they include and exclude Planeswalkers, there's not really a lot of, a lot of rhyme or reason to it. I mean, Farewell doesn't do anything good here right like the problem is the planeswalkers and farewell doesn't do anything with those opponent running their stuff out uh, like we can cast farewell but we still just lose uh, is there any way I mean, I guess we cast it. Garrett everything, but <laughs> this is very, very bad for us because our opponent has a sword and a Liliana. So we're really sweeping away nothing of <laughs> nothing valuable. We're sweeping away a couple one ones. One of the most powerful rats ever printed, but let it do more. I mean, <sighs> is that, is letting it get rid of Planeswalkers a positive or a negative though? Seems like everyone's looking at it as, oh, that would make the card more powerful, which I guess is true, but what would that actually do to the meta? Like, it seems like, wouldn't it be beneficial to not just get run over by Planeswalkers? <laughs> Opponent takes up their Soren. I mean, I feel like... Ah, I mean, there, it goes both ways, right? Like, if you're going to print Okos, and you're going to print Kaidos, and you're going to print, like, really powerful Planeswalkers, then there should be answers to those Planeswalkers. Like, that's... To me, that just seems, like, very obvious. So I just... Not that Farewell itself necessarily has to... Has to be the card that answers them. But I don't see a lot of rhyme and reason at what Planeswalkers... What can hit Planeswalkers and what can't hit Planeswalkers. It seems like it's very, very scattershot. Where it's just like, oh, this spell does hit Planeswalkers. This one doesn't hit Planeswalkers. There's no, like, no formula to it. Not if you're in the business of selling Planeswalkers. I mean, that might be a little bit tinfoil hatty, but... <laughs> I mean, I guess that's not a completely absurd point that... Wizards does... They are the faces of magic, so... <laughs> I guess you do want Planeswalkers to be very powerful, because... Because uh, they do sell sets. Wow, are we stabilizing here? I feel like we might actually be kind of stabilizing here. So we get to... Spirited Companion, draw a card. Ooh, oh, now we're definitely stabilizing. Wandering Ember, we're just going to do this now and gain some life. I don't like being so low on life. I can't believe we overcame. Pony had multiple Planeswalkers going off. I am very surprised that we managed to get back in this game. I thought we were 100% dead, and now I think we're actually just winning. Hey, what's up, Mr. Zakara? How uh, how are things over in Ukraine? An opponent, all the planeswalkers in the world. 
But what if me and Hook Massacre could get, could get Planeswalkers? Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> maybe maybe that's it. Maybe if I hit Planeswalkers, we'd be good. <laughs> I mean, we've had to remove all non-land permanents, right? Isn't, isn't Planner Cleansing? Planner Cleansing is what six mana destroy all non-land permanents i think so part of what makes there's two things that make that make farewell so much better a big one is exiling like exiling is is a really 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 huge difference um and the other one is flexibility like that's the other thing that makes it so powerful is you can kind of control it when something like planner cleansing it was like pretty much only played in hardcore control decks that were not trying to play any non-land permanents if that was your game plan then planner cleansing was great like sure it's not hurting me at all it's getting all your stuff farewell's got a lot more a lot more optionality because you can choose you can like keep your creatures get rid of the artifacts or do shenanigans like that so yeah graveyard hates also an upside hmm do we need to sideboard anything out? So opponents got a lot of Planeswalkers. Game one, they look like an aggro deck. Game two, they look like a Super Friends deck. Uh, do we, you know, run it back, run it back. I do like this deck now. I like where this deck ended up. I like its ability to grind. Exactly why Farewell would be OP hitting Planeswalkers. I don't know if I agree, honestly. I feel like it already hits a ton. And rather than being only, uh, rather than it being played by Planeswalker decks to blow up everyone else's stuff, it would be nice if those decks also got hurt by it. I think that that would be my argument in favor of Farewell also being able to have a Planeswalker option is right now it just it heavily favors Planeswalkers. Like, Planeswalkers, yes, it would make the card more powerful if it also said Planeswalkers, but right now it just it heavily benefits Planeswalkers by excluding them when every other type gets hit by it. I mean, I would say it should hit lands, but <laughs> it's 2022. Wizard's not going to go for that anymore. If this card was printed, uh, if this card was printed, like, 20 years ago, it would hit lands. <laughs> Ooh, counter all the, yes, counter all instants, counter all sorceries. <laughs> if it was an instant. <laughs> oh, about it. Stay at Frisky with our Blood Tithe Harvester. Sure, sure, sure. And Liliana the Veil. What are we doing with the Liliana the Veil? takes down to get rid of the token well uh play the land yeah i guess we just pass make a token leave up our wedding announcement open it take a look at this yoda legends engine deck for explorer well, this looks familiar there's the soren makes a vampire The opponent ticks up. Well, I think we discard the farewell now, honestly. Opponent out of Magic the Gathering cards. No attacks. Well, Wandering Emperor. Make a Samurai. Tick up. Attack Soren. About it. Double blocks. That well, will kill the flyer. Oh, we'll kill the non flyer, apparently. Kill the non flyer is what I meant. <laughs> Wedding announcement. I guess that actually worked out potentially better. Well, wedding announcement. Wedding announcement is also a really, a really good card. Reba Daddy, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I think we'll get a pseudo Tron, but I don't think we get a real Tron. I don't think they can put real Tron into standard. I think that, uh, wow, cashing in the lily. Sure, sure, sure. Fable of the Mule Breaker. Well, play a land. 
Wedding announcement part three. A lot of weddings. It's wedding season. Tick up. Go to combat. Kill the Soren. No more card draw. Hit your face. Draw some wedding announcement cards. We want an artifact to turn on these reliquaries. Yeah, Mishra Tron. I could see that. I'm sure I would be shocked if there wasn't a Tron reference. Absolutely shocked. I don't think we'll get... I don't think we'll get Tron proper, though. I would also be shocked if we actually got Tron back in standard. Wedding Tron. Wedding Tron is, a, is about the right standard. <laughs> standard level for Tron. About it. I mean, I guess we just kill it. Opponent's probably looking for Meat Hook Massacre, I guess. While opponent just passes? Fable of the Mia Breaker. Well, I guess we're drawing one. Would be better if we had an artifact, but we'll we'll take a draw one. There's the artifact. All right, play the bank buster. Tick up on the hue man. Go to combat. Smack you around. It's a lot of damage. Oh, opponent's just gonna take it. Wow, opponent giving up on everything here. Uh, sure. Roadside Reliquary, legit. L oh, to populate. And a saga. Flip them both. Our stuff is huge. Opponent also going to try to flip a saga, but a little bit too late, I think. I'm Nyx list. Not going to save you. Discards a land. Is it a sweeper? It's a braids. Braids is cool, but not cool enough. <laughs> a little bit too dead. Yeah, get rid of the braids. Opponent. Passes. Hmm. Uh, well. Restoration of a Jano. Snake of Plains. Play the land. Tick up on a dork. Go to combat. Attack with everything. Opponent blocks. Blocks. Drop into one. Drop into one. Sure. Now let's sell this to us. Draw a card. And this one seems pretty over. Oh, so how's, how's everything going, Mr. Zakara? Would Blood Moon be okay in Standard or Pioneer? <clears throat> yeah, no. <laughs> Probably not. I mean, I want to say kids these days. <laughs> that's that's what I want to say. Kids these days, they just uh <laughs> they just don't know, they just don't know what it's like. They don't know what to they they're too soft. Kids these like some old man rambling. Back in my day, we used to play outside with knives and scissors, and we all survived. But, I mean, in, to some sense, I think that is, like, kind of true. That just, like, magic isn't, magic isn't about that anymore. And I think that magic is better for not being about that anymore. Um, better for most people. It's one of those, like... It's better for the most people to not have magic be. Hmm. It's better for the, the largest number of people to not have magic be about that anymore. Although. I enjoy that style of magic. And I know there's other people who've been playing for a long time that enjoy that style of magic. But I don't think the game would reach as many people if a common play pattern was you can't play magic. Not in newer formats like Standard. In older formats, I think that should still be a... I think that still should be a supported way to play Magic. Pioneer is kind of the cutoff. I feel like Pioneer does need more hate for lands. Like, I don't think that Lotus Field should just be able to run roughshod over the, the field be, uh, because we're not allowed to mess with lands at all. Like, there's got to be a balancing act with formats like that where Blood Moon itself is probably too much, but current land hate is probably too little i i do kind of think that like stone rain i would start with something like stone rain i think that stone rain coming back to standard 
could be could be interesting and might be okay. Hey, what's up, uh, Valivo? But I would probably start more in that range, in the the stone range, uh, the stone rain range, rather than like Blood Moon just going well over the top. Oh, good game, uh, Valivo. Deck looks sweet. Game one. Oh, that aggro star got me real good. How to get goldfish to play mono white and commander? <laughs> oh, let me see magic Arb. I haven't. I haven't decided what a. Uh, well, viewers submitted that guy I'm, I'm playing this week yet. Ooh, let me let me see. Joda, Joda Legends. What do we got going on, Jank MTG? Ooh. You do get some neat options once you go back to older formats. Mox Amber seems like a big addition. Parado Ooh, Paradox Engine. Paradox Engine, super spicy. Chromatic Glory. I mean, it looks super fun. If you can just, like, stick your pieces on the battlefield and sling a bunch of spells, you're going to have some really huge churns. Uh, really huge churns with this deck. That looks super fun. Yeah, maybe we'll have to try Jota. We're playing Jota in... Uh, playing Jota in... Steam oh, no. Oh, no, oh, no. Well, I guess we're keeping a one-lander. Um, playing Jota in Standard tomorrow, but maybe, maybe we'll have to try an older format sometime. Oh, Kav is, like, one of my favorite Planeswalkers, too. All my favorite planeswalkers just never return. <laughs> they all they all get killed off and we never we never see them again. Vencers, Koths. Oh yeah, so I will be I will be picking my viewer submitted deck tomorrow. So if you have any last minute submissions for viewer submitted commander clash, get them get them in, link them whatever cuz we're recording on Thursday, so we're getting to the we're getting to the end of the line. For when we're actually gonna have to uh to pick our deck so i will probably honestly i will probably try to play a a new a new ish legend either either one of the literal new legends uh this is another super friends deck either one of the new legends from dominaria united or Something new to Magic Online that we didn't have before. Well, go go wedding announcements. So that's my that's what I'm going for. So if you have a sweet deck that features something new, you'll have a decent chance of getting picked. I'm not 100% married to playing a new a new legend, but if I find a sweet deck that has a DMU legend or one of the new to Moto ones, I I will probably go that direction. The King of Lullaby. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Opponent going to draw some extra cards. Draw some extra cards. Yeah, we're not getting much pressure at the moment. Well, play the informant. Loot. Discard a Sanctuary Warden. Play Informant. Loot. Well, can't keep Bajano because we don't have the... Oh boy, we didn't get to draw a single card off these wedding announcements. The Mold of Five hurts. The Mold of Five is definitely, definitely making this way harder than it should be. Oh, opponent's gonna just Meek Massacre again. If they Meek Massacre again, we might, we might just concede. Yeah, that's a pretty busted card. Yeah. Um. Is there even any point at this? Yeah, opponent's just, yeah, we're gonna scoop. Opponent's just drawing two cards a turn. I don't think on the mold of five at this point, there's any way we get back in that game. I think that one's just purely over. Boy, there are a lot of, a lot of Planeswalkers in standard, eh? Some new pre-con cards made it to Moto. I mean, we weren't 100% dead, but I feel like that's a... <laughs> That's a, a game where we have very low percentage of winning, and it was going to go on for a while of our opponent just drawing all the cards while we get our stuff killed. <laughs> bear Bay! Yeah, little little bear in the background. Hey, Bear Bay. Hey, Bob. 
We're streaming. Once we finish the stream, I'll take you for a walk, okay? Misplay, correct play was Bank Buster. Yeah, I was trying to avoid getting spell pierced. Hey, Bubby. Are you going to say hi to everyone? Hey, can you put your head up here so people can see you? Hey, big boy. Oh, bonk. Hey, Bubby. Come here. Bearby. Bearby. Oh, what are you doing, bub? Set. Bubby. Hey, there you go. You want a treat? Hey, people still can't see you, but... <laughs> You tried. You tried a little bit. He's camera shy. He's a little camera shy. Oh, there he is. You can see him in the background. Hey, Bob. Hey, Bobby. He knows. He has a he has a pretty good sense of time. He knows like, okay, it's been it's been about it's been about so long. He's got to be getting close to the end of the stream. End of the stream means he's gonna take me. Uh, he's gonna take me out for a walk. So he has a pretty, a pretty good, a pretty surprisingly good sense of uh, of that. Linera, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, hmm. Yeah, let's restoration. So we can hit our land, and we can use it to put Bank Buster into play next turn, which is sweet. Um. Yeah, we're not going to attack this time. Last time we attacked and it didn't work. Let's try not attacking this time. Yeah, Bear Bear's pretty... He's probably a 5'5 five, five trample. He's pretty big, aren't you, buddy? He's got to be like 150 pounds. I mean, he can go outside when he wants to. We got we to gotta sit up, so he's got a, he's got a doggy door. He can go outside, do, do what he wants. Yeah, well, there's the meatball again. Sure, sure, sure. Hey, oh. Unfortunately, a little late on land use. Uh, well, discard the bank buster. Get back to bank buster. Wedding announcement part two. These wedding announcements are making it very difficult for us to actually draw cards with our, or these meat hooks are making it very difficult to draw cards with our wedding announcements. About it. Well, hopefully we hit a land. If we hit one more land, we're in good shape. Any chance you could take a look at this deck, Seth? Still kind of new to EDH deck building. Yeah, let me let me take a look, uh, Donut. About it. Gonna do some looting. Oh, his so opponent's like full-on crimming. This is like, this is full-on like Grixis control, I guess. About it, Basses. Ooh, a land is good. Well, flip the saga. Play the land. Oh, can we risk the bank buster? How bad is it if the bank buster gets killed? How bad is it? We'd like to get rid of the Kaido. I mean, I guess we're not. You know what? Let's. We can probably get it back eventually. Let's. Let's do it. Let's see if we can kill this Kaido. Go to combat. There's the Inferno Grasp. Me hook masker life gain. Well, hit the Kaido. And then I guess we just start playing AOs. Opponent. Even more removal. Well, they keep the Kaido for now, but AO! <laughs> Riley Mon, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, let me see halfway. So commander deck Ooh, Zoraxa Hydra's A I think you're on a on a pretty good track the deck looks fun Zoraxa Hydra's looks really fun 37 lands is a good number uh it's hard to count all the ramp looking at a deck live on stream with 100 cards I, I see some in there Arcane Signet Soul Ring Cultivate that's usually the other thing I check for might maybe could use a little bit more ramp i but i don't know i i don't know what i'm missing uh in this huge list but i'd be aiming for like 10 ish ramp spells probably but i like the counter synergies i like the hydra synergies the rocks is a perfect commander for it so i like uh i like where you're going on it i would just say double check that you got 10 ish ramp spells on top of the on top of the lands but i'll go to combat 
Kill Kaido. Hope. Actually, okay. How badly do we need Kaido to die? We also need our opponent to die, technically. Yeah, whatever. I mean, attack, attack, attack. Hit our opponent. Attack the Kaido. Mega Dork. And. Ooh. Storm the Festival, yeah, I've. <laughs> I've kind of wondered where that's been, Halfling. My opponent going to Rona's Vortex. Well, it drops to 14. This means we get to play Elspeth. We get to take down Elspeth. We get a... Restoration. Which grabs us a Plains... We draw another Invoke. Things are looking pretty good. Yeah, the Naya Storm the Festival deck looks good, Halfling. Yeah, it's so weird because Storm the Festival has been... That was like a staple pre-rotation. We still got plenty of good things to uh, to fun to play, but it's kind of just disappeared. I, I, it's probably because it's so much green mana and everyone's so black-focused, but I think that Storm the Festival is still a really, a really powerful card. Well, hmm... What are we discarding? What are we discarding? Um, yeah, we'll discard the AO. That's fine. We might want it for reanimation purposes anyway. Get back the bank buster. I really want to play the new Jaya. Decided the best path, um, but decided the best path to go with her. Wait. Hey, Seth. I really want to play with the new Jaya. But decide the best path to go with her. Any thoughts? Mono red or blue red spells? Any kind of deck or control shell? Ah, oh, that's a that is a tough one. I feel like New Jaya is just like a strong planeswalker in a kind of generic sense. So I feel like there's multiple multiple options for making New Jaya. Good. Yeah, let's just try to kill our opponent here. Opponent. Even more Rona's Vortexes. All about the Vortexes. And Parasitic Crasp. It's a trigger. Well, okay. Now let's invoke justice. Get back. Ayo! One, two. One, two, three, four. Well, this lets us play around Meat Hook the best. Make a bunch of seven power creatures. Pass the turn. About it. Oh, maybe we're going to have to kill that at some point. So I think Jaya can go in a bunch of different places. I think it could be in control. Maybe its best home is something that... I don't know. I think top end of aggro, burn, is it, is a pretty a pretty good possibility for a home for Jaya. Ooh, another wedding announcement. All right, this is looking pretty good. I'll go to comp. Oh, we could have done something different. Well, go attacking. Yeah, we could have ticked up Elspeth and maybe... Oh, jeez, okay. Yeah, it's a hole breaker horror. <laughs> well, that's a hole breaker horror. Yeah, we should have picked up Elspeth to give it flying, I guess. Yeah, that's a that's a bit of a a bit of a punt. Well, wedding announcement. Bank Buster. Take down Elspeth. Get a wedding announcement. <laughs> All four wedding announcements. Draw some cards. Flip it. Well, let's see how much our opponent can bounce. About it. One card in hand. Seven points of life to work with. They can attack and draw with Kaido. I don't know how we get rid of this Hullbreaker or, yeah, that Lobster. We might get punished for that punt. That punt might get us. We definitely should have ticked up the Elspeth opponent. Gets in, wants to draw a card. Sure, sure, sure. Down to 28. Draws with Kaido. There's no secret I 
opponent. Look at this setup. Look at these wedding announcements. Yeah, we could use some butter. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll have to try to build a Jaya deck because I do think Jaya can be good. Well, okay. Invoke justice for Elspeth. Point me towards the fight. I'm ready. Grow our dorks. Take down Elspeth. Get a spirited companion draw card. Play the land. <laughs> Crew the bag buster. Go to combat. Everything at our opponent. Make a dork. About it. What do they got? What do they got? Is this enough? Or does this one whole break core actually save it for our vote it? Oh! Wow, okay. New card, Troll Chef. When a blue creature you don't control dies, create a food token. Flavor text, merfolk fillets taste better with brown butter. Merfolk, well, we might have to play modern merfolk at some point. Merfolk are, uh, are on the rise. Ooh. Ooh, what do you think of this card? So this this commander deck, this uh, Warhammer commander deck, seems to have this weird... This weird land sub theme of making your lands do different things. I don't know. I don't know Warhammer. So maybe that's like perfectly, perfectly flavorful. But some of these cards are pretty interesting. This card, four mana two for Reach Death Touch, says all lands have tapped in a mana of any color and lose all other abilities. So improving lands, but also potentially being a hate card. And then this one, two mana two two, human tyranid advisor, basic lands you control have tapped in two colorless mana, spend this mana only cast X spells. Pretty neat theme. I actually like, I like these decks. I think these decks are good. So chat, are you getting these decks? Are you picking up the Warhammer decks? Uh, Warhammer has a lot of terrain interaction. Okay, that makes sense. So that's all the all the changing of a land theme. So are you buying the decks? Are you picking up the Warhammer decks? Ooh. I think we got a mulligan. I like the two wedding announcements, but we can't keep two colorless lands. All right. Well, uh, destroy evil, I think, to the bottom. Well, here we go. Go, go, ayo. Land, go. Naya Excess Spell Slinger. Ooh. I like the idea of trying to use the excess damage to turn on a to turn on Rith. So it's kind of like a, a burn. Interesting. So kind of like a burny mid-range deck. I I like the idea of it. I think that that's probably probably one of the, the better ways to try to turn on Rith. I mean, if you consistently get the... Oh, boy, they always always got that Kaido every time. Oh, no, even more. Oh, well, we have a record, a record land season here. <laughs> Whoa, that's a lot of lands. That's a lot of lands. I love Warhammer, and I would get Ruinous Powers, the Grixis one. Yeah, I think that, uh, that looks fun. The... The excess damage. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Yeah, this is not looking great. This is this is unfortunate running. Unfortunate running at unfortunate time, which is probably our last match of the stream. You don't want to go out like this. What a what a bad way to go out with a deck that has performed pretty well overall. But we have just drawn an amazing number of lands. Truly epic. About it. <laughs> 
our deck is very plain indeed. Opponent's drawing extra cards each turn. I assume some of them are not land, so that's probably going to be an advantage for them. <laughs> oh no, yeah, this is... This is the nightmare. Opponent makes a vampire. Little does our opponent know, Celestis, which is technically even just more mana somehow. I don't know how that's possible, but Ao! Alright, Ao. Up to you to save us. All the lands in the world against all the planeswalkers in the world. Can the white dragon spirit save us? Come on, Ao. You can do it. You can do it. Phone gets in. Mm-hmm. Gonna draw some cards. The problem is our opponent's playing a million Rona Vortexes, so Ao's actually not very not very good in this matchup. It's too easy for opponent to deal with without actually triggering its death trigger. About it. All right, well, at least we get the death trigger. That's better than a Rona's Vortex. Go dig in. Take. Hmm. I guess Wandering Emperor? Wandering Emperor to start pressuring? Or is Wedding Announcement better? Yeah, let's take Wandering Emperor. Ao is pretty powerful when it dies. Do you think this Shieldred is broken? I think that Shieldred is very strong. I don't think it's... I don't think it's broken. But I do think it's a, a very strong card. I'll make a Samurai. Um... Any plans to rule around Zer? So Zer, I think there's a decent chance it wins the next against the odds pool. It was on the last pull, and it was the the runner up to It was the runner up to Joda. So I think there's a pretty good chance that uh the Zer will win and we'll play a Zer deck uh, before too long. Uh, opponent blocks. Well, Salistus. Sack Reliquary. See if we can draw some non planes. Well, those are non planes. <laughs> we'll see if we can get them on the battlefield. That's question two, but opponent gets in. It's us. This feels like a Meat Hook Massacre kind of turn for our opponent. Just draw a card, draw a card, Meat Hook Massacre. Yep. All right, there's the meatballing. And a bunch of triggers. And a vampire and a ninja. Ooh. Hmm. Well, I guess we just Sanctuary Warden. Draw a card. Play the land. Pass the turn. We're fighting the good fight. Like our mono white deck is keeping up with <sighs> with this double planeswalker just ridiculously ridiculously card advantage heavy draw from our opponent. Like we're we're fighting it. We're we're staying with them. Childra's biggest issue is that she seems way better than other colors for drops. Well, I mean, I think that's true of black cards, like, more or less up and down the curve. <laughs> like, black's two drops are way better than other colors two drops. Black's uh, shoulder is better than other colors four drops, so I think that's... I think that's, uh... Shielder is not the only black card that has that, that issue. Hmm... So opponent's got a flyer that we can't really kill. Now go to combat. Attack Kaido. Attack Sorin. Decline. Uh, 
three drops. I mean, Fable the Mirror Breaker. Maybe we should, huh. Now I kind of want to do a video on the best, the best card of each mana value in standard. Now that I'm thinking about it, that's kind of an interesting topic. Well, Seraph Aragon. Get back. Restoration of a Jano. Get a Plains. Play it. Spirited Companion. Draw a card. Yeah. Oh boy, the planes keep coming. Oh, we have drawn so no, and it's a hull breaker horror. Well, all right, Celestis. Yes, this is, this is bad now. Opponents are dabbing with all their mana and a hull breaker horror, and our board is about to get bounced into oblivion. About it. Who's better, Shielded or Wandering Emperor? Who? That's a that's a good one. I mean, so it's kind of a tricky comparison just because they're not the... Wow. Yeah. Me Hook Massacre is... Oh my god, that card. Um, that's tough because they're very different card types. I, I would say that overall in all of Magic, Wandering Emperor is probably... Well, I don't know. Wandering Emperor is definitely better in older formats than Shieldred. Shieldred is probably better in Commander and Standard... I don't know. In standard, it's hard to compare a creature to a, a planeswalker, I think. Opponent to the discarding the hand size part of the game. Not a not a great part of the game for us. Well, discard one of our ample planes. Get back spirited companion, draw a card. Invoke justice. Go for a wandering emperor. I mean, we gotta kill the Hullbreaker Horde to have any even, like, chance for a miracle to happen. So that's step one. And even then, our opponent's got multiple Planeswalkers going. Asking a lot. Asking a lot of our little deck. March. Gonna bounce Invoke. Well, okay. Kill Hullbreaker Horde. Not dead yet. Play in the land, spirited companion. Draw a card. I mean, they can't have that many whole breaker horrors, right? <laughs> we only got a million planeswalkers, but maybe that's the only whole breaker horror. How about it, ninja. 27 life somehow draws another Kaido. I mean, what do you think stronger overall? Shieldred or Wandering Emperor? Well, flip the saga. Play Elspeth. Take down Elspeth. Get... Wedding Announcement. Hmm. Bank Buster. Go to combat. Attack Kaido. Uh, now we can't even really invoke justice because of this unlicensed terse. Well, Bank Buster. Play the land, pass the turn. All right, make a token. Shelter is stronger. It will win you the game, having done nothing but sit there and block. That is true. We've uh, we've seen that. Hey, Seth, I know saying cards wrong is very much on brand, but you are wondering, uh, is Steris, whatever, from Warhammer, Set, uh, Steris. Oh, that makes sense. Y'all signing it on the podcast the other day cracked me up. Yeah, that's, 
<laughs> that one's a rigid mispronunciation, really, although I guess I said it the same way. I assume that it could not be Astar. It's like, that's that's just way too ridiculous to actually <laughs> to actually be the name. Uh Asteris makes sense. What is what is an Asteri? Hey, what's up, Orion Heart? Welcome. Hello to you. Hey, see you, Daifon. Thanks for hanging out. See you, see you on Thursday. Good luck getting to uh to Mythic. I will be rooting for you. Let me know Thursday when uh when we have our next stream. About it. Getting in, drawing cards. Sure, sure, sure. Maybe we can mill them out. <laughs> Draws with Gino. Uh -huh. no Why are they called Asteris, though? So they're Space Marines, and they're called Asteris. The Beast Mode. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you. So, Meat Hook Massacre. Uh, again. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. About it. Sweeps the board. Are we getting near the end of the Meat Hook mass Massacres? I mean, I guess they just bounce it back to their hand to do it again. Well, draw a card. Untap. Draw a card. Draw a card. Lots of lands. Play a bank buster. Bank buster Tron assembled, but not doing much. Uh, draw a card. Please stop giving us planes. Ah! Are there even planes left in our deck? How is this possible? How How is this amount of plane drawing actually a, a possible thing that can happen? Pwnit, gonna Infernal Grass might as well. I don't think we have any lands left in our deck. I think we've drawn pretty much all of them. We're going to do a little count here. So we get a token. 11, 12. 13. 14, 15, 16. So I guess we haven't drawn all of them, but we have drawn. Whoo! Yeah, oops, all planes, uh, indeed. Just wanted to say that standard burn deck looks incredibly fun. Hey, thank you. The Reaper, maybe? Let's go with Reapers. But thank you so much for the kind words and welcome to the stream. Unfortunately, you're going to. See us lose this game, I think. About it. Dire times call for dire Is Warhammer actually actually enjoyable? How many of you actually play Warhammer? The new Esper dude is sweet. You don't like it. It draws cards, though. It draws so many cards. In lore, they're named after a character who helped invent them. Uh, see, I don't... <laughs> oh my god, another one. I don't, I don't really know magic lore. I just barely have learned magic lore, so I definitely don't know Warhammer lore. Oh, so many. Well, I mean, we've been talking about Mulek Masker all, all afternoon. This match is a good example of how strong that card is. Sanctuary Warden. Remove a counter. Make a dork. Play a land. Ayo! I mean, we are fighting the good fight. I don't know if we can fight this fight into a victory, but our opponent is, they gotta be running out of Mewok Massacres. <laughs> there, you're only allowed to play four. There are rules to this here game. Pwn it. Gonna go digging for the last one. Memory Deluge. One, two. And they bounced the one and replayed it. So we've got Mewok Massacred four times this game. Four times. <laughs> I mean, you gotta work for it a little bit, right? You gotta have, what, tokens entering the battlefield. And you gotta have, like, multiple tokens to really make it good. So I feel like there's some amount of work to it. Opponent gonna go attacking. Well, uh, block with A-O. Get... Drained to six. Well, it's got to be meat hook number five. <laughs> well, this is the perfect way to end our stream because this is just like the this is this is standard. This is standard. This is this is what standard's all about. This is why everyone's playing black decks. 
This is it. This is it. This is it. Meek Massacre, the wrath that gains you ridiculous amounts of life. You can bounce it back to your hands. So you can do it again and do it again and do it again. There's a reason that literally every... <laughs> I don't want to say literally every deck because that's an exaggeration, but there's a reason that 75% of decks, 75% more than Oko, breaking Oko's records, we're off the, off the charts. There's a reason that that amount of decks are playing this card. It is because it is very, very good. Um, hmm. I mean, Paragon would be nice, but you know it's just going to die. Actually, we probably just died to this hearse, right? That seems to be the... So we got to get Paragon, so we don't immediately die to the hearse, which I, I assume is what our opponent's trying to set up here. Opponent. Tigs up Sorin. And... Hey! See you, Mother Viger. How are you? Oh, I mean, our opponent's just, our opponent's just playing, uh, playing what everyone else is playing. Our opponent's not doing anything wrong. I mean, Mewig Massacre is a, is a card that is very good. A little bit wild to get hit by Mewig five times in a match. That's, that doesn't happen all that often. Wow, I'm surprised our opponent didn't go for the win there in some way. And we actually get to untap with our Sarah Paragon. I'm surprised about that as well. 21 cards in our deck. Huh. Well, we shouldn't have to worry about getting hook, hit by a Meat Hook Massacre, which is nice. I guess we just... Yeah, let's... Rafine's Informant. We can discard the Invoke Justice, which isn't doing much anything. Because of the hearse. So discard invoke justice. Spirited companion draw a card. Play the land wedding announcement. Uh, now what? crew a bank buster go to combat attack attack see if we can get rid of these planeswalkers I mean, we're kind of still in this game. Hey, what's up, uh, Lepsy? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Do you think not having Righteous Valkyrie killed Giada Angel decks? I mean, at this point, maybe our opponent just doesn't care because they have additional copies in hand. So maybe they're just like, whatever, we'll just replay them. That would kind of make sense. Well, hmm. Yeah, let's just let's just pass. Draw a card. Nineteen to twenty. This has been a wild game. Uh, shield. We got this uh from an Elspeth, so it came into play with Elspeth's ability. So it's got a shield, a <laughs> random shield counter on it. All right, another planes. Well, that's all right. We had to get we had to get that planes out of the way. We want all the planes. We want them all. Opponent, gonna kill the informant, go up to 38. Well, pass the turn. Opponent untaps. So we can draw two, we can get the tokens with these bank busters. Opponent, not gonna play anything, weird. All right, well, bank buster, draw a card. Bank buster. What does our opponent do? I'm so confused at our opponent's plan. Okay. Make some treasures. What is going on in this game? What is our opponent doing? 
Uh, I do think that losing Righteous Valkyrie hurts Skiata, but there's a lot of good angels in standard. I think the real issue is just they don't line up very well with the black decks. I think that's the... I think that's the the real the real problem is the black decks just they're very good at killing putting random things on the battlefield. They don't have ETB triggers or whatever. So I think that's kind of the the issue. Well, let's play we have 14 cards. We're going through maybe our opponent literally is trying to mill us out. Um well let's spirited companion draw a card. <laughs> yeah, Miyug Massacre, Liliana is also pretty good against him. All the all the black removal. Yeah, wedding announcement. And wedding announcement. Go to combat. Do some attacking. Opponent takes it. Well, Rafine's informant. <laughs> oh, 13 cards left in the deck. Discard a land. Play a Jano. Pass the turn. <laughs> Draw a bunch of cards. Why is our opponent not playing anything? Why? Why, why, why? Maybe they're time stalling. There's a time limit in your matches. And you can lose if you have less life if the counter gets to zero. Ooh. Yeah, time-wise, I think we're actually ahead of them in time. I'm very... I don't even know. Just... Ooh. Oh, they're okay. They're trying to do whole break horror stuff. Well, that's uh interesting. Um sure, loot. Discard restoration. Oh, so now we can just not ever get rid of this home break horror. Kaido gonna bounce some stuff. Yeah, that does it. <laughs> Somehow this whole break horror control deck has found a way to make me me hook massacre even more obnoxious. Our opponent has found a way to cast me hook massacre a legend six times. Oh Jesus. <laughs> All right, they're gonna bounce our treasures. Mia Massacre again. We gained a bit of life. Yeah, this one's just this one's just over. I mean, this is something you can't do with other rats either. There's so many ways that Mia Massacre is just so above the curve. Yeah, all the meatballs all the time. Opponent. Yeah, it was attacking. Mount Wandering Emperor. Opponent. As disdainful stroke, of course. Well, okay, draw a card. Drop to ten. The opponent draws another card. <laughs> and the problem is nothing nothing resolves. Could we have tried to destroy their Mio and respawns? Ah, uh, I mean, we could have tried. The odds of it working are incredibly low, but you can always try. Uh, Wandering Emperor. Go after the Hullbreak Horror. Rufine's Informant. The problem is we just... There's no way we can win before we mill out at this point, I don't think. I don't think it's actually possible. Invoke justice. 
Our graveyard's been so cleaned out by this. By this hearse. Wow. What a ridiculous game. Opponent, multiple hull breakers. And this is phased out. Well, I mean, crew it up. We're not going to win by not attacking. Crew it up. Go to combat, hit ya. Pass the turn. Draw the rest of our deck, unfortunately. Yeah, there's we can't get there in time. Even oh, one too many. Hey, what's up, Affinity Discord? All one too many meat hooks. We could have beat we could have beat five meat hooks apparently, but the six one. Seventh one. Yeah. All right. Oh <laughs> uh, well, apparently that's where that's where standard is these days. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason. There's a, we looked at the numbers the, earlier. There's a reason that seventy five percent of decks play Meat Hook Massacre. There's a reason it is the best card in standard by a very long shot, and. Our opponent in that game decided to uh, to maximize their ability to to play with it, and they just they went deep. They went deep, and I mean, you play all the played all the control cards and just played every single way to to bounce it back to hand, and it worked out for our opponent in that game. That's for sure. So, huh? Well, what do we learn? I think we played 100% black decks, but that's standard. That's not really a surprise. I think mono white. It's not black. We saw that. It, it, we don't have the Meehook Massacre. We're missing some of those, you know, super busted cards that uh, the other decks have. But I think that uh, I think that Mono White can be pretty competitive. I gotta say, I think that Mono White works surprisingly well. It can grind with those decks, even if it's maybe not quite as good as those decks. But uh, but yeah. So Mono White's pretty sweet. We'll have to try some of the other decks uh, in the future. I despise Crim deck as much as I like Crim as a person. I think that's that's pretty normal. So anyway, everyone, I think that that brings us to the end of today's stream. I gotta go take the bear bee out. He's waited patiently for, uh, during our stream. So that's Mono White. If you like grinding but are trying to avoid playing black, doing something a little different, it is a fun deck. I think our uh, our improvements. I really like Roadside Reliquary. I think that is one of the big takeaways for me. That that card felt legitimately good. Um, and a lot of the other cards like Ao's pretty good. Sanctuary Warden's gotten a lot better. So I think the deck is is definitely sweet. But on that note, everyone, reminders on the way out the door. Replay YouTube. That's where you find all the old streams, including this one in the future. Normal YouTube doing some joting tomorrow. And one more reminder that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. And if you need some magical cards. You can get them over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. Even get a goldfish sticker. Just ask about it in the order notes, and they'll hook you up for free. Most importantly, thank you to all of you. Y'all are amazing and awesome and spectacular, and I love y'all. Thanks for hanging out this afternoon. Have a wonderful night. Have a great Wednesday, and we will be back on Thursday for some more fun. So until then, everyone, I love y'all, and I will talk to you soon.